as we will now remember those that died, their families, the survivors, and those still impacted. Today we observe a period of silence for the 97 Liverpool supporters who lost their lives. They will never be forgotten. For those of you on the cop, please raise your mosaic cards now. The silence starts on the referee's whistle. figures of 97 amidst the red, yellow and white and tomorrow on the actual day of the Hillsborough tragedy the players and staff will fall silent at 3.06 to observe a minute of silence in memory of the 97, the men, women and children who lost their lives as now Liverpool in all red form a team huddle Crystal Palace in their white shirts and sky blue shorts and uh, extremely emotional afternoon, Neil Lennon. Oh, that was beautifully observed. And I have to say that, you know, every single person in the stadium was so silent and just, you know, what a tragedy. I remember it very, very well, very vividly. So, yeah, it's emotional, but they've got to put the emotion to one side now and, uh, you know, concentrate on what's a, a massive afternoon for Liverpool in this title running. Well, I remember being here eight years ago on this day, Liverpool played Borussia Dortmund in the Europa League and uh, they performed one of the great European comebacks that particular night, Lovren popping up with a, an injury time goal which uh, certainly they didn't start well that night, Borussia Dortmund had raced into a 2-0 lead if my memory serves me correctly and Crystal Palace who started well in games under Oliver Glasner are playing from left to right, are quickly on the front foot, out towards the left, and the cross comes in from Mitchell, and Alisson back in the starting lineup, dive forward and manage to, uh, to push the ball away. This is the closest title race in England's top division since 75-76, when four teams were separated by a point after 31 games as Palace come forward again, and Ezra with a shot at Alisson. Liverpool, incidentally, went on to win the title that year. Whether they will this time, only time will tell, but there is certainly no margin for error. That's not exactly the start they wanted. Already Mitchell's put a cross in that Alisson had to come and deal with. And then Nezzy works with a little bit of magic on the edge of the box and, and gets a shot away. So a little bit sluggish from Liverpool already, but Alisson really sharp off his line there. Neil Lennon with us here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Bradley on that far side, the right, up towards Salah. Hasn't been himself since he came back from injury, Mo Salah will have taken a quick free kick, too quick, <laughs> says referee Chris Cavanagh, and he wants play brought back just over the halfway line. I like the way he was thinking there. Nunez was on the run, but he's like 10 yards away from where the, the free kick was uh, supposed to be taken. 15 goals in 21 before his injury, two in four since, and certainly Liverpool, their finishing has been an issue this season as they try and get forward but Hughes on the half volley clips it up towards Mateta certainly he has blossomed since Oliver Glasner took over as the ball cleared by Canate Mitchell the left wing back inside to Lerma plays the left of the three Anderson and Klein make up that three-man defence for Crystal Palace as Endo to Van Dijk quickly out towards Robertson made his debut against Crystal Palace back in 2017 for what was a a victory at home by a goal to nil. They'll take that today. Although with a goal difference, they'd maybe like a few more. 
That could well be a factor. Robertson forward gets a throw near side the left. They're attacking the Anfield Road end, all in red. BBC Radio 5 Live, two and a half minutes played. Jones nudges the ball in field. McAllister midway through the Crystal Palace half central. Bradley out, then it goes to that far side. Ball shifted inside by Salah. Bradley's first cross was blocked, comes back to the Northern Ireland International. Plays it towards McAllister. McAllister being tracked by Hughes, forces the ball out wide, too far ahead of Bradley, and out of play it goes for the throw. When you've been in this situation, and I know Darren asked you the question before, but do you feel the nerves? Of Is course, it? yeah. Yeah, yeah. of course you do. You wouldn't be a human being if you didn't feel the nerves, you know, but um, you just got to play the game. You got to. This is the best time for Jurgen now. The game's on the way, and he can get lost in the game. It's just the the build-up. There'll be, you know. And what about from a player's point of view? Yeah, they just want to get on with the game now. You know, just the the, the the main focus. And I know it's an old cliche. It's just we're in the present. Just look after this game now, and then we'll deal with what comes ahead afterwards. But you know, you've got a, a fine team in front of you that you have to beat. You have to respect. It's not all about us. And we have to earn the right to win this game. Do you thrive on the pressure? Oh yeah, first is a privilege, isn't it? Five titles as a, as a player, five as a manager during his time at Celtic. And Celtic might be on course for another title this season as well after struggling Ross County beat Rangers by three goals to two. So their leader at the top remains four points and Rangers now only have one game in hand. Four minutes played here at Anfield. We've got Arsenal Aston Villa to come at 4.30, by the way. I'm just looking at Stephen Bradley's position. He's right up there inside a Mo Salah almost like a number eight position and then Endo drops back in to play with the two centre halves you know the, the, we talk about this inverted fullback these days but he's really high there for a fullback with the ball is in this half of the pitch in he's definitely impressed hasn't he here is uh, Connor Bradley on that far side he started 16 of the last 20 he did miss a couple of games after the uh, the passing of his father in February here is uh, Jones Virgil van Dijk, five minutes played, nil-nil it remains in the early stages here. Here is van Dijk spreading play out towards Salah, finds him, lays it off. McAllister, the return ball to Salah, and Lerma came across and won that sliding challenge and passes the ball forward to, uh, to Ezra, but Endo, as Neil Lennon was saying, filling in there for, uh, for Bradley, and Bradley now still coming back from that high position, inverted. Uh, now gives it to uh, to Endo. He offers you the insurance, doesn't he, Endo? Endo, yeah, it's so important in this um, formation. Listen, the number six is always so important, but he did a great job there. Bradley makes a run inside and it opens up the pitch for Van Dijk to switch it out to Salah then. But um, I have to say, Palace have started quite bright, Ian. You know, they're popping it about and they look, you know, quite comfortable on the ball at the minute. They've done well, actually, in the northwest this season. If you, uh, you look at their results, 1-2 uh, and drawn 2. They've won away at Burnley and Manchester United. Got a draw at Manchester City uh, and Everton. 2 0 down at Manchester City under, under Roy Hodgson. Never felt when Roy was in charge that they were going to get relegated. No. Uh, Oliver Glasner's taken five points from his last six. Roy's last six, seven points from six. And uh, when Oliver Glasner talks about, well, we've got to build the basement first of all, I think you'll find Roy Hodgson did that. This is uh, an 11th successive season in the top flight for Crystal Palace. They've got to kick on. The basement's already been built. Here is uh, Endo. Canate, forward ball. Luis Diaz, central area. 25 yards out from goal. Gives the ball away. Tries to win it back. Ezra rolls clear of him, though. Wharton oh. gives it back to Ezra. Nice little layoff. Ezra now towards Mateta. Van Dijk was just dropping off, so he's played Mateta onside as he runs over towards that far side. Mitchell provides the support. The two Crystal Palace players between them keep it alive. Back it goes to Hughes. Infield to Wharton on the slide. Tried to nudge it to Elise. And Van Dijk can't pass it back to Allison because of Mateta's presence. In the end, they've lost the ball of, uh, of Liverpool. And Crystal Palace now, as the sun decides to come out here at Anfield, still attacking. And it's with, uh, with Ezra, left-hand side, loses the ball. McAllister plays it back. Bradley infield to Canate, along the ground to Salah. Crystal Palace, though, are pressing. They've won the ball back. Low cross comes in from Mitchell on the left. And Allison now bowls it out. And Robertson, forward, in between two Crystal Palace players, finds Luis Diaz. He's got Nunez. And Robertson has continued his run. Now finds Nunez, first time shot, easily patted down by Dean Henderson. Amazing, amazing football. I mean, it's just so chaotic from one end of the pitch to the other. 
Well, great passage to play from Palace. Cross comes in, Allison cleans it up, and then straight out there, Robertson, two one twos, and uh, Diaz was able to play Nunez in, but the angle was too tight for scoring from that angle. It was a great move, in great counter attack. Now, currently on Sports Extra, West Ham, Fulham, and there's been a goal, Sahel Sahi. It's gone to Fulham against the run of play, Ian. It's West Ham nil, Fulham won the goal coming after nine minutes. It was a crossfield ball from the right-hand side. A mistake from Mavropanos. Pereira latched onto into the penalty area and slotted it home in the dead centre of the penalty box. West Ham nil, Fulham won. Commentary of that's on Sports Extra. This is Five Live and BBC Sounds. Van Dijk to Robertson on the halfway line. Curtis Jones makes himself available ahead of the Scottish international. Elise back in the uh, starting lineup. They've uh, certainly missed Michael Elise. He played the last 16 minutes against Manchester City, but missed the previous seven with a, a thigh injury. But regardless who the manager is for Crystal Palace, when you're missing Eza and Elise, yes. two talented yes. players. They look, they look a different team than those two. I know it's an old cliche, but yeah, they look far more vibrant when those two are in the team. And I have to say, Mateta has had a good spell on the Glasner. He looks fitter, Ian. He looks like he's trimmed down. He looks in a lot better condition. And, you know, you can see that he's, he can be a handful. And he's got his first share of goals, lately. Yes, he has. Five goals in nine in the Premier League since the start of February. Today, incidentally, is his 100th appearance for Crystal Palace. Jean-Philippe Mateta. Nine minutes played. In the sunshine at Anfield. Nil-nil, Liverpool and Crystal Palace. Elise backing into Endo. Kept in play by Stumbling Jones on the halfway line. Oliver Glasner, the Austrian, applauds. Jurgen Klopp in his technical area likewise with a big thick coat on and a baseball cap. Shielding the sun from his eyes as Canate and Endo just outside the centre circle of the Liverpool half as they defend the cop. Over the halfway line it's with Robertson. Back inside to the Japanese international. And now with Canate, Connor Bradley still wide right at the moment, just over the halfway line, but the goes, ball goes forward, Jones to Robertson, midway through the Crystal Palace half, back to Endo once again. Bradley's ventured a good 15, 20 yards further forward now. Diagonal ball aimed towards Salah, brought under the air by Nunez, just outside the D. Nunez finds Bradley, right corner of the area. Bradley waits, McAllister makes himself available, forward ball by McAllister. Nunez, I think, was mindful he was coming back from an offside position, didn't attempt to go for the ball, he runs straight past him and out for a goal yeah, kick, nil-nil. It came back to him, I think they wanted him to flip it, you know, because Diaz and Jones had made a run in at the far post. I know what he's trying to do, he's trying to slip Nunez back in, but he obviously thought he was offside, but decent passage of play there from Liverpool. It's interesting watching Salah from up here, just a little sort of areas he's picking up, he's not way to think about he varies his positions and sometimes he's right out wide but other times when Bradley comes in comes wide he'll go and step into the number eight pocket and um, you know they don't want they overload it with him and Nunez in there and people the is not too sure whether to go with him or not well, Salo is after that ball but Anderson got there first with his header Nunez picks it up carves it forward to Diaz sliding out was Anderson again Nunez there is forward the two of them have got history remember Nunez was uh, sent off in his home debut for a headbutt against Anderson, the Danish international, as Luis Diaz. That was last season. McAllister plays it back to Canate. Outside the centre circle, Endo now out towards Robertson. First time ball. Anderson is there at the back for Palace. Sloppy by Elise, but then it runs off the shins of Robertson. And much to his dismay, goes out of play for, uh, for a throw. So we've been playing for 11 minutes and it's still nil-nil. He's looked great, Nunez, though. He's picked up a couple of second balls and kept prompting the attacks. Looks really hungry today for work and hungry for the ball. Good passage to play again from Liverpool. They're starting to sort of put the foot on the gas a little bit and keep uh, Palace penned in. Munoz with the uh, the throw for Crystal Palace. He's played every minute since he, uh, he arrived, the Colombian from uh, from Genk in January for just under £7 million. Have you seen much of Wharton? I have, I think he's yeah, quite tidy. So did I. I liked him at Blackburn and um, he started this game pretty well. Really nice footballer, you know? yeah. good balance as well. There he is with his uh, short, fair, cropped hair. Quite slight, isn't he, still, as a 19-year-old. As a Doesn't turn 20 until June. But I've, uh, I've seen him a couple of times, actually, in the flesh. Very, very tidy midfielder. Oh, good touch. £18 million pounds they bought him from Blackburn Rovers. Jones gives the ball away. Munoz made a couple of good additions in the, uh, in the January window in that, in that respect at uh, Crystal Palace. 
And both of them actually haven't missed uh, a game since they arrived, both Wharton and Munoz. Back it goes to, uh, to Allison. He was under pressure by Mateta. Out to Robertson, sliced his clearance, and it'll be a Crystal Palace throw on this near side, the right, level with the penalty area. Munoz takes it quickly, hooks it in field, off the chest by Elise. Mitchell's got forward on that far side, the left. Totally unmarked at the moment. Back it goes, though, to Lerma, just outside the centre circle. Anderson now will come forward. Anderson will switch play out towards Mitchell, who remains isolated, feeds it forward. Elise closed down by McAllister. Loose ball picked up by Mitchell. Crystal Palace forward on that far side, the left. Rolled back by Elise. Every outfield player is in the Liverpool half as we look as the Crystal Palace side play in their white shirts and sky blue shorts from left to right. Wharton to Hughes, bypasses Hughes actually, runs out towards Elise, early ball, Mitchell's ahead of him, left-hand side, Mitchell with the cross, there's a brilliant goal by Crystal Palace, that was superb, they were patient and they picked apart the Liverpool defence, and yet again, they take the lead, that is six out of seven under Oliver Glasner, that Palace strike first, and they lead it Anfield by a goal to nil. Yeah, I'm just looking at Jurgen Klopp's um, reaction, he's gone, I'm a good lip reader, he's gone wow, Oh, that was a brilliant move from Crystal Palace. There must have been about nine or ten passes in the interchange then to get it a little break down the left-hand side. Lovely cutback, and there's Ezzy free in the box. Now, Ian, when, you, when you're playing the way... This is the first time I've seen Liverpool live for a while. When you're playing your fullback so high and wide, there's a jeopardy to that when you lose the ball. And they're obviously down this left-hand side, Palace's left-hand side, they're getting a lot of joy because Bradley's just, you know, sort, sort of roaming, wandering... And that's obviously the way he's been told to play. But like I say, there's a jeopardy to this. And they've been punished. Endo can't get there to stop the cross. Kanata is not picking up. Van Dijk's not picking up. And it's a simple goal. But thoroughly deserved. Beautifully worked move. How does somebody with the quality and the talent of Everici Eze be allowed so much space in the penalty area? Well, he's just drifted off. Kanata's ball watching. Van Dijk had Mateta. But Kanata's obviously marking the space. And you know most... Nine times out of ten in modern football, when fullbacks get to those byline positions, they either dink it or they cut it back. And I just think that he's not seen what's coming into the box, can I? But it was worked far too easy down that left hand stadium. You know, the Liverpool haven't got their distances right in midfield. They're so open. And um, this is the Kamikaze approach sometimes that they take. I've got to say, it was a brilliant goal. Brilliant Su- goal, su- brilliant su- move. Superbly worked by, uh, by Crystal Palace. And their fine record in the northwest could well be continuing. And Mateta makes the run in behind Canate. All of a sudden, there is uh, an anxiety around Anfield as Mateta tries to flick it offside, coming back from an offside position. But this is Liverpool's 32nd game this season. That's 18 times that they've fallen behind in those games, which is quite staggering when you think that they are still in with the uh, in the title. It's not what I was expecting, right? Because it's been quite passive from Liverpool particularly in midfield very very gentle start slow you know slow with the ball and giving the ball away you know and uh, against good opposition the way you think Palace are a good team or not you have to respect them they're a Premier League team and they've got good individuals and here they come again Ezra the goal scorer runs into Canate and that was like running into a brick wall and Ezra has stayed down on the edge of the area as Liverpool clear it referee Chris Kavanagh said no free kick Ezra though is still in a lot of pain and still with his back on the floor Alisson actually is trying to get the attentions of his teammates for them to put the ball out of play to alert the physios to say that you've got a teammate here who's struggling instead it goes back to Henderson launches the ball long Eze now is back to his feet at least Crystal Palace lead by a goal to nil 16 minutes played here on 5 Live Robertson to Van Dijk Eze now running back but still actually holding what is his left shoulder Endo on the halfway line Robertson ahead of him. Crystal Palace have got everybody back. Ez is still holding it. You have to keep a, an eye on that as McAllister out towards Bradley on that far side. Let's get an update in the Women's FA Cup semi final. Tottenham Leicester, Flo Pollock. Half time in extra time. Tottenham won, Leicester won. Leicester came close in the first period, hitting the bar from a free kick. 15 minutes of extra time remaining, then penalties if required. Tottenham won, Leicester won. And the Crystal Palace did take the lead last week against Manchester City. They poked the bear as Diaz with a cross. Not properly dealt with by Mitchell. Headed by Bradley, cleared by Lerma towards Eze far side. Rolls it forward. Oh, Ooh, there's a slip and Mateta's away. And Mateta now in on goal, slipped by Van Dijk. Mateta goal words, hooked off the line. Brilliant bit of defending by Andrew Robertson. 
never gave up the chase. It was going goalwards and just with the last ditch attempt hooked it away. That is absolutely awesome, Ian. What a brilliant passage of football that is. Again, the out ball is Eze because Connor Bradley's up the field. He's been a great out ball for Palace. He just rolls the ball into Matera. It's a poor ball, but Van Dijk slips. Leaves Matera clean through one on one. I thought he was a bit casual with the finish. He dinks it over Allison, but you've got to give Robertson a huge amount of credit. Never give up on it and makes an unbelievable goal saving tackle on the line. Honestly, what's a clearance that was? That's just pure determination and grit. And we're seeing it now on the screen. He couldn't attend it any better. That's just a player not giving up. It's just world class from Andy Robertson. That was just sheer desire. Yeah, total. He couldn't have left it any later either. But how much of a wake-up call do Liverpool need oh. here, Ian? They've been so one-paced at the minute. That, you know, Henderson's hardly had a look, and this is not the start I was expecting at all. I credit the Palace, they're playing brilliantly. And they're playing with a great deal of confidence at the moment, and they're leading by a goal to nil, which will give Arsenal supporters on the way to their home game against Aston Villa at the Emirates so much heart. As Ezra again, his forward runs into Canate. Liverpool at the minute just can't seem to click. They were looking for a reaction after that defeat against Atalanta. They were so poor on Thursday night. It could easily have been more. Atalanta squandered. Hope Miners had at least two other good chances to, uh, to add to that 3-0 lead. But Liverpool, 19 minutes in haven't clicked yet and Crystal Palace had it not been for Robertson would have been 2-0 up for me the game's too stretched for Liverpool I know that's the way they like to play it's almost like a game of basketball at the minute you attack and wheel attack but they're getting no real sort of um, passages to play with and get it up the pitch they're sloppy in possession and then when the, on the turnovers they're nowhere near the opposition Robertson closes down Munoz Munoz gets the throw on this near side 19 minutes played Crystal Palace lead by a goal to nil you have to go back to March 2021 for the last time that Liverpool failed to score in back-to-back -back home games. They've got a very good record of it finding the net. They failed to score just twice in their last 60 games. But at the minute, they've been below par and Crystal Palace are the better side. Offside, though, against Mitchell on that far side. Free kick to Liverpool that McAllister will let Canate take. Jurgen Klopp patrolling that technical area down below Liverpool 1-0 down Allison forward to McAllister tracked by Hughes sure during his derby days he was being heavily linked with uh, with Liverpool when he first broke out as uh, a promising teenager I think his contract runs out at Crystal Palace come the summer Will Hughes with that shock oh. of blonde hair that was almost a risky ball to Canate Allison forward ball Endo they beat the press eventually although they play it back to Endo and he was on the stretch as Mateta you're right Neil he does look a lot leaner Jean-Philippe Mateta giving chase Allison clears Nunez rises in the air Anderson sliding clearance picked up by Jones to Salah and then cleared by Anderson chested forward by Van Dijk Liverpool looking for an equaliser as we approach the midway point in the first half Robertson didn't keep the ball in play it'll be a Crystal Palace throw on this near side yeah sums Liverpool up at the minute sort of nearly there a little bit bitty oh is that Lerma I think he's gone down by an injury here Ian so Lerma is, uh, is down I mean at the minute you've got Nathaniel Klein as a right back and Jefferson Lerma as a midfielder helping out with that three man defence I think he's just a bit winded with the way he landed from the challenge on Nunez in the air he's alright to, uh, to continue he's sort of will he has certainly he uh, better than his last visit here which was Bournemouth when he was beaten by nine goals to nil in August 2022 West Ham Fulham in the other two o'clock game Sahel Sahi 23 minutes played West Ham nil Fulham won the goal coming after nine minutes through Andreas Pereira West Ham were on top until Fulham scored since then Fulham have been on top West Ham nil Fulham won Excellent sliding challenge by Lerma. He certainly recovered there to stop the track of uh, the run of Nunez. Jones picks it up. Sliding challenge comes in on Jones. Goes behind for a corner kick. West Ham Fulham incidentally is on Sports Extra. But at a packed out Anfield, Liverpool have got a corner kick near side the left. Yeah, it was a nice move down the left. Jones got the wrong side of Munoz, but he made a great recovery tackle for the corner. 
This is a real test for Liverpool. You know, they're just going to have to dig in here and just play with a little bit more urgency and sharpness. Robertson then with a the corner kick. Three strides back, left footed, near side the left. It's an out swinger. Canate was there. Runs off his body, picked up by Elise. Out of the penalty area, forced to return. Klein clears. Head of goes to the side from McAllister to Robertson on this near left-hand side. 30 outs out from goal to Nunez. Tries to scoop the ball back to Robertson. Robertson will win a corner kick. Oh, he's given a goal kick. Oh, he's given the goal kick. Klein went in. Last touch must have been off Robertson. Klein did well. It's a good foot chase between the two. Thought the last touch came off Klein. What a player he is, though, Andy Robertson. I mean, every game he gives us all. And he's just single-handedly at the minute trying to drag his team back into this, you know, and get the ante up get the tempo up, you know, get the crowd going. He's already saved the goal for his team and now he's the driving force down this left-hand side. Incredible bit of defending for uh, Andy Robertson with that goal line clearance, otherwise Crystal Palace would have been two goals to the good. Neil Lennon with us here on BBC Radio 5 Live, midway through this first half. Liverpool behind, Endo. Yet to be on the losing side when he started games in the Premier League for Liverpool. Anderson out of defence, heads it forward, strikes the head of McAllister, falls for Luis Diaz, up against his fellow Colombian Munoz. Goes on the outside, beats him for pace, Diaz still going, Munoz leans into him, the referee though says no penalty. As the ball is picked up by Henderson and Chris Kavner was well positioned. Not sure there was enough in that, Ian, we'll have to see it again, but great player from Diaz, he looks like he's got the, the legs on Munoz. Drives past him, gets away from Anderson. No, there's nothing in that really, it's just uh, coming together really. Meanwhile, Elise is forward. Good game of football, Crystal Palace is certainly contributing oh, to that. Elise, I could watch footwork. him all day, Ian. <laughs> Honestly, he's beautiful to watch. I'm a big fan of Ezra, the way that he just glides. Well, the glide, him and yeah. Elise, you know, he's got a beautiful left foot as well. Here's Ezzy now. Here he is, the goal scorer for Crystal Palace, who still have that slender advantage in the 25th minute. Tricky sort of player. Uh, he thought he'd got a throw on that far side the left but Chris Kavanagh has said it will be a Liverpool free kick when I mentioned that Liverpool have fallen behind in what is now 18 times this season they do have or they have won the most points from losing positions in the Premier League this season they've claimed back 27 and they're going to have to do that again because as we said at the very start you know there is no margin for error as M Nunez battles for the ball chips it forward Salah will give chase Henderson quickly off his goal line good anticipation gets there for Crystal Palace Ian he's done the hard bit brilliantly and then he's only got a little pass into Diaz and Diaz would have been in he's tried the, the difficult scoop over the top for Salah again you know Nunez showing willingness but just that that lack of uh, quality at the end and here they go again down this left hand side it's too easy at the minute for me for uh, Palace to get out here is uh, Hughes back it goes to Joachim Anderson, the only Crystal Palace player to have started all 32 Premier League games now. As Wharton rolls it out, ball from Mitchell infield to Ezra, tried with the outside of his right boot to hit it forward to Mateta, took a deflection, allows Connor Bradley to clear, closed down by, by Mitchell, and it will be a Liverpool throw down by the corner flag in front of the Sir Kenny Dalglish stand and the, uh, the cop over on that far side. 26 minutes played. And Crystal Palace still lead by a goal to nil. And here we were beforehand talking about potentially the chance for Arsenal and Liverpool who could go seven points clear of Manchester City before the champions are next in action at, uh, against Brighton on the 25th of April. We can rule Liverpool out of that equation at the moment. Robertson. Could be a, a costly setback this for Jurgen Klopp's side. Diaz forward to Robertson. Robertson, though, single handedly on the charge, wins a corner kick. He has been so impressive for Liverpool down this left hand side. Liverpool corner. That's fantastic again. Great drive, great speed, great quality. Lovely little ball over the top from Diaz, but the run Robertson makes, it's about 50 60 yards. Heads it past Klein. Klein can't get to him, and Anderson has to make the block from the cross. Brilliant from Robertson. He'll need a breather now, Ian, will he not? He will. He's just had a. A short one, but he's in action again. He's involved with this corner kick. Left hand side, another outswinger. Left footed from Robertson. Canate's there. Van Dyke can't dig it out. Ball hits the crossbar. It was from Endo falling backwards. Comes towards McAllister, edge of the area. Liverpool come close to an equaliser. Played forward by Bradley. Brought very well out of the air by Luis Diaz. Salah, right hand side, scoops over the cross. 
Nunez has stayed forward, stabbed back to Van Dijk by Jones. Jones left-hand side of the penalty area, Liverpool pressing now, Jones enters the box, cuts it back, there is Wharton to clear the ball away. Crystal Palace survive. Liverpool kept out by the crossbar and what would have been a third goal for uh, Endo falling back. Liverpool just starting to get into their stride now. Yeah, it was a funny one, that. The ball just the seemed to be slow motion and it popped, popped out to Van Dijk. He couldn't get it out of his feet, but then Endo took a swipe at it and a little dink off the crossbar and came back out. So Palace survived, but it's not brilliant play from Liverpool, but the quality in the front three could be the difference in this game. 28 minutes played, Bradley forward, McAllister with the cross, headed out by Klein. Right of the three-man defence, but he was quite central there, Nathaniel Klein, as he stooped to head it away. Anderson back in position, marshalling that defence now. Munoz comes out of his, what was a flat back five there, just to try and close down the run of Robertson. The two of them just square off a fraction. Endos forward ball, McAllister almost trying to draw Hughes in. Then it goes back to Endo, in between the two central defenders, Canate's forward ball, Diaz centrally, lays it off towards Jones, creates the run on the overlap for Robertson, it's a first-time cross, Diaz! The keeper got a touch to that, I think, behind for a corner kick, what a save that was from Henderson, from what applying a, Luis Diaz. Absolutely brilliant football, brilliant, what a save, what a, what a move. Canate into Diaz, Diaz out to Robertson, beautiful first-time cross in, Diaz arriving at the far post, Scissor kicks it in the air, almost goes in at the near post and Henderson has to punch it away it was brilliant just, football Ian. just a, a swish of the left hand that stopped it from creeping in from a flying Diaz on that far post Liverpool pressing corner kick far side the right Canate with a header six yards out couldn't keep it down yeah he should have scored free header great ball in from McAllister gets a run on the near post almost at the corner of the six yard box and then uh, heads it over the bar but now we're seeing Liverpool burn their teeth a little bit. They've been a bit sort of sleepy in the first sort of half an hour, but now they're sort of turning the speed up a little bit, and it's all come from Robertson. He's been a real driving force. There's been a goal in extra time. Tottenham Leicester, Flo Pollock. Tottenham one, Tottenham two, sorry, Leicester one. Martha Thomas with a looping header. Surely Tottenham are heading to Wembley now. Four minutes left, Tottenham two, Leicester one. Thank you, Flo. Earlier, Ross County 3, Rangers 2. So struggling Ross County, getting a, a valuable three points. Real dent in Rangers' title aspirations. Arsenal-Aston Villa commentary to come at 4.30. Then it'll be 6.06, .06, and from 8 o'clock tonight, the US Masters, the final round from Augusta, Mark Chapman, Ian Carter and co. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, the overnight leader with, I think, a one-shot lead. 8 p.m. tonight on BBC Radio 5 Live. Meanwhile, Elise running forward from Eze. Back heel from Mateta. Flags up. Wouldn't have counted yeah. anyway. Mind you, I'm surprised he went with a fancy flick rather than just guarding it in first time. But he had it so sloppy from Liverpool again. Canati plays the ball in the end, though. It's a sloppy pass. He gets sort of robbed by Wharton and then Palace are at them. They're breaking four against three. It slipped out the, I think it was Mitchell. Good cross in. No, it says he crosses it. Good ball in. Mateta's always in the offside position. Should have held his run. That's three great opportunities they've had already. Here is uh, McAllister. McAllister forward. Goes down just outside the area. Oh, wow. And the referee has given a direct free kick inside the D, just outside the box, Chris Kavner. And this won't be very good for Dean Henderson. It's so central. Whoever takes it, they could go either side. Just looking at it again, I wasn't sure whether it was... A yeah, there's contact there from Lerma. It is a free kick. Yeah, good decision, ref. But yeah, you're right. These are funny ones, but they're so close in, Ian. Yeah. Sometimes I, was, I think you might have to move it to one side to get a, you know, a shot off. It's really hard to get this up and over. So you're literally, for the people listening in, you're like 19 yards right in line with the centre spot, central. There's no angle for you at the minute, you know, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do here. That's Neil Lennon, the former Northern Ireland international who's with us here. 13 minutes to go to half-time for what has been a, a very good game of football, very entertaining. And Crystal Palace lead by a goal to nil here at Anfield. And you have got, well, one of four who are hovering near the ball. Salah, McAllister, Nunez, Robertson just on the periphery. I don't think he's going to take it, so we're left with Nunez, McAllister and Salah as a likely taker. Meanwhile, Crystal Palace in their white shirts with the sky blue sash 
going down the front. They've got, I think, Nathaniel Klein in the draft excluder role, standing behind what must be five in the wall there. You've got another three just to the left as we look. Henderson not going to be very well sighted at all with this because two Liverpool players have also now stood in front of a couple of Crystal Palace players. It's either going to be McAllister or Salah. Liverpool trailing. It's going to be McAllister into the wall that broke very quickly. Blocked by Ezzett. Comes out towards Van Dijk. Midway through the Palace half. Out towards Jones. Jones doesn't keep the ball in play. Tried to let it run. Drop his shoulder away from Elise and didn't realise that he was going to run out of uh, playing surface. And so with 12 minutes to go to half-time, Liverpool still trail. Yeah, I think they did the right thing by moving it, just not quick enough, getting the shot off and a good block by Elise. So it's finally poised, you know, I mean, Palace have been good volley for the lead, they've created some great clear-cut chances. Liverpool or Liverpool, you know, they're not at their best at the minute, but we know how dangerous they can be. And the worry for Liverpool is that Crystal Palace have shown enough quality that on the counter-attack they are more than capable of increasing their lead. They've uh, had it not been for that terrific bit of defending from Robertson, they would have been leading 2-0. They've had a, another chance since that uh, Mateta just straight into an offside position as McAllister tries to release Salah. Salah looking to get away from Lerma. Lerma, though, back goal side. Salah into the penalty area, pushed away by Henderson off the left foot of uh, Salah. And now Elise picks it up inside his own half, goes infield to Hughes. Hughes showed too much to McAllister, been dispossessed. McAllister... Loses out to Wharton, Robertson tries to win it back, Endo, Wharton battling for it in the midfield, Crystal Palace players doing well, and now it's with Mateta, and he's got Munoz going on ahead of him on this near side, the right strikes his heels, and Munoz tooks it back to, uh, to Elise, Mateta battling for it, it's a really good contest in the midfield. Robertson looks for the run of Nunez. Anderson will go with him. Henderson comes out and volleys the ball out for a Liverpool throw. There's been a goal in the women's other FA Cup semi-final. Manchester United, Chelsea, Sané Rodrovagula. And as United had taken the lead inside a minute, it was a mishit back pass by Perry set the right back for Chelsea. United came down the left-hand side with Dalton. She crossed for Lucia Garcia to fire home. We're 1-0 to Manchester United after two minutes. Which Manchester United won Chelsea nil. Incidentally, that's live on BBC One. Uh, match the day two tonight, BBC One at 10.30, Alan Shearer and Shea Given are doing all the analysis and certainly I'm sure they'll be enjoying this game because from a neutral it's been an absorbing watch. Ten minutes to go at a half-time, Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace one. Robertson waits, stationary, left-hand side, Endo. Back to Van Dijk, ten yards forward into the Crystal Palace half. Endo gives it back to the uh, to the Dutchman. He's got such a proud record. His only loss in 97 Premier League home games was that one against Leeds United. And they'll be hoping that they can still salvage it here against this excellent Crystal Palace side who are alert and ambitious. And they've certainly shown plenty of adventure. So they come forward again with Eze. They've got Elise making the run into the penalty area. It was just a heavy right-footed touch that had presented it to Allison because otherwise they could have been in again Ian they can't keep giving the ball away Liverpool in those central areas this time it was Endo and they, Crystal Palace are cutting through them with the brilliance of Eze the brilliance of Matete and the brilliance of Elise they look such a threat on the counter attack they set up beautifully they're nicking the ball in central areas and they're killing Liverpool on the counter and they're lucky Liverpool at the minute that it's not more than two, uh, one if you're hearing uh, a bit of ringing in your ears, it's not tinnitus, it's the alarm bells that keep ringing from Crystal Palace because there have been so many <laughs> warning signs, hasn't there, from this Crystal Palace side. Every time and time again. Tottenham against Leicester City, it's now finished. Flo Pollock. Full time in the women's FA Cup semi-final, Tottenham 2, Leicester 1. Tottenham women are going to Wembley for the first time in their history. They came from behind today to win an extra time. Tottenham are into the FA Cup final. Full time, Tottenham 2, Leicester 1. Van Dijk, out it goes to uh, to Bradley. Header forward though on that far side. Ezra plays it back. Little touch by Hughes didn't quite come off. Here is uh, Endo. Endo to Jones. Back pedals. Tries to give himself a little bit more space. Out then on this near side. Robertson lifts the ball in field just outside the centre circle. Van Dijk towards McAllister. Back with Van Dijk. Crystal Palace have got everybody back behind the ball. We've got. Eight minutes to go to half-time here on BBC Radio 5 Live. And Liverpool still trail. Crystal Palace have been 
well worth the lead. McAllister, Nunez, with a little flick, didn't quite come off. By the way, from somebody who suffers with tinnitus, I wasn't making light of that condition. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> I've got a lot of problems with my ears. Pardon? <laughs> Header away, <laughs> walked into that one. <laughs> Henderson waits. All in green, away towards our left-hand side. Clears it, quite high. It's going to drop, actually, and invitingly for McAllister to head it forward. Hughes then plays it back. It'll be some team talk the way it stands for Jurgen Klopp, isn't it? I think he might have to make changes. There's definitely a problem earlier between Canati and Bradley when Bradley goes so high. You know, and if they don't get the pass right, Palace are breaking through Yezzy down the left-hand side at will. And it, the midfield's a little bit, for me, seamy seamy. You know, one paced, nice passers. There's no dynamism come from the midfield, and they're not getting the ball quick enough into those, you know, front three who can be devastating. We saw a cameo of Salah earlier on, a long ball over the top where, no matter how good a defender you are, sometimes you just can't stop. But he steps inside, gets a shot off. But it's been few and far between you in this first half. The thing is, though, realistically, Liverpool need two goals. A draw is not yeah, good enough absolutely. for Liverpool. And it's really hard. You've talked about the amount of times they go behind. It's a big effort to pull that back each and every time. And um, they're going to have to do it in the next 50, 60 minutes. Offside against Ezra, that'll be a free kick to Liverpool. Liverpool have taken 32 points out of 39 since Christmas. Manchester City, 39 from 45. Arsenal 32 from 42 for any of the three title chasing sides realistically with the quality that the, the three have got they've got to win every single game Bradley turns holds off Mitchell runs forward Connor Bradley into the penalty area Anderson again there Anderson has been so alert throughout clears it into the bottom tier of the Sir Kenny Dalglish stand on that far side. Liverpool have a throw, five minutes to go to half time. Can you just say, you know, we've got to give Palace an enormous amount of credit for that. One, the set up, and two, their attitude to this game. They're playing with um, the two outside centre halves to Anderson. One's a midfield player yeah. and one's a right back end. Yeah. You know, and they prefer Henderson's had one, one really good save to make so far. Here is uh, Canate, back with uh, Van Dijk. Left of the centre circle, Anfield falls silent. Canate to Endo. Full backs are pushed on. One of them is Bradley, far side the right. His forward ball to Salah. Easily dealt with by Mitchell. Now up to Ezra. Loses out. Liverpool with that cluster of red shirts. Salah right hand side. Lerma was alert. Step forward. Ball played forward. It was a little bit too. Eager by Jones, cleared by the Crystal Palace defence, only as far as Allison. You can hear the frustration in the Anfield crowd, desperate for Liverpool to get back onto level terms. Crystal Palace, though, with Van Dijk retreat. Robertson hits a hopeful ball forward towards Luis Diaz, cleared by Klein. Jones tries to help it back, and it will run out of play, and it will be. Crystal Palace throw on this near side, four minutes to go to half-time. They had that little flurry just short of the half-hour mark, didn't they? Yep. Endo hit the crossbar, uh, Diaz forced a save out of Henderson, and then we've just had a little bit of a, a, a bit lull, of a lull. Since. Yeah, although Palace did have that counter-attack when Mateta was offside. But again, Ian, they're playing through the midfield far too easily. You know, they're not getting close enough Liverpool in midfield. The gaps are too big. And Hughes and Morton and Elise and uh, Eze are having a great time. There's another shot. And Elise with a shot, laid off to him by Mateta. It was straight at Alisson. Van Dijk's, Van Dijk's starting to you know, get after people. He has to do that. He's the captain. I've been disappointed with him. First half has been... I know Virgil very, very well. He needs to do more for the team here because you can tell they're struggling a little bit. And that's where your big players need to step up now. Just over three minutes of normal time remains. McAllister ball over the top, Nunez gives chase Henderson hesitates, he crosses, it comes to Luis Diaz, the angle is tight, can't get it goalwards, dug out by Munoz flag was up on the far side anyway, it wouldn't have counted That the hesitation from Henderson just allowed Liverpool that glimpse of goal yeah I thought he was offside but I'll also have to look at my goalkeeper you know he's, yeah, he's, he's just slightly offside but that's Henderson's ball all day long I don't know why he stopped, he should just come out and clean that up, it was a decent lane from Palace to prefer 
He made an error here uh, when he was on loan at Sheffield United, failed to hold a Gini Vidaldum shot, did, uh, did Dean Henderson, getting a, a run now in the Crystal Palace first team with that elbow injury to, uh, to Sam Johnston, who's going to be out for the rest of the season. There's McAllister, referee. That's strange from Chris Kavanagh. Sees the free kick, McAllister is being held, Endo brings the ball clear. Let the game flow, where was the advantage for Liverpool? Yeah, none whatsoever, it was a poor decision from the ref. Fans are letting them know in. <laughs> Two minutes to go to half-time. Here is uh, McAllister. Crystal Palace again have got the white shirts back behind the ball. Here is uh, Endo now. Jones in the centre circle, but you've got in front of him, you had Hughes, Wharton, Elise. Jones is being tracked there by Wharton, putting him under pressure, passes the ball to Canate. Wharton now retreats, Canate with a diagonal ball, finds Endo on the half turn, out then to Robertson on this near side, the left. Infield back towards Endo. Laps of concentration, loses the ball, goes underneath his right boot, tries to win it back, Mateta shrugs him away as Klein passes the ball out to Elise on this near side, the Crystal Palace left, midway through their own half. His forward ball goes straight to Jones, runs away from Munoz, to McAllister, McAllister to Canate. Munoz, though, continues to track oh. the ball, and there is a turnover, and Munoz with his hard work and his tenacity has paid off for Crystal Palace, and Eze and Elise running through, and they've got a man over him, etc. If Elise can get his head up, Elise in towards the penalty area, goes for goal. Left foot is shot, blocked by the legs of Van Dijk, and there was another warning sign for Liverpool. Crystal Palace couldn't take advantage. They've had enough chances. Ian, Liverpool have been so sloppy. They've turned the ball over in so many bad areas and Palace are just setting the traps and waiting to pounce. You know, and a better ball into Elise and he'd have been clean through there. It was just too far ahead of him. Here they come again. Here is Eze. Eze left-hand side with a cross. Mateta darting header at the near side of the six-yard box, saying he was being pushed. His head is off target. Crystal Palace playing very, very well, leading by a goal to nil. A uh, beautiful dummy from Eze. He has been magnificent first half. And a beautiful little ball to the outside of his foot. I'm not sure there's a push there. It's, um, he's outside the near post. It's a really difficult angle for him to score the header. There's no foul there. But again, great play from Eze. Canate forward ball. We're going to have two minutes of added on time, which will be into in about 30 seconds. Mateta holds the ball up for Crystal Palace inside breaks it down as there was a breakdown in communication between Elise and Eze and now Robertson on this near side the left for Liverpool Robertson forward ball Luis Diaz trying to back into a Klein Wharton throws himself into the challenge Diaz has done well as he spins free nutmegs Mateta for good effect now with McAllister into stoppage time we go McAllister's ball is behind Connor Bradley and the crowd now just starting to get on the players' backs here at Anfield. You can feel the frustration. But again, for me, I think Bradley's too far ahead of the ball for McAllister to make that pass. If he just holds his run, then he can slip at them square and he can drive forward. It's just obviously it's something that they talk about in training. You know, Connor takes up these really wide and high positions, but just the Palace have capitalised that area so many times in the first half on the counter. Ball hit forward by Hughes. What a 45 minutes lie ahead in the second half for Liverpool and their title challenge as Elise helps win the ball back for Crystal Palace. Eze is behind him. We're in stoppage time. Sun shining once again here at Anfield. Certainly not shining on Liverpool's chances as the ball is a rather hopeful one forward. Henderson running back, gathers it in before Nunez inside his penalty area to the acclaim of the Crystal Palace travelling support. 1-0 to Crystal Palace. Stoppage time here at Anfield on BBC Radio 5 Live. Arsenal, Aston Villa to come at 4.30. Henderson. He was guilty of uh, time-wasting in a recent game at Nottingham Forest. Crowd on his back there. Eventually he clears it away downfield. Lerma heads it away. Helped further clear by Mitchell. Out of play it goes for a throw. Over the course of the 45 minutes, Liverpool probably haven't done enough in this first half. No, Palace have been played the better football, created the better chances, been the more disciplined, they've kept the ball better at times. Ian, I've never seen Liverpool give the ball away so much. And like I said to you earlier, you know the midfield for me looks too one-paced. Very similar players in Jones, McAllister, and Endo. I think Endo struggled. I think um, 
Wharton and Hughes have done a very good job, but they've had plenty of space to play in, particularly on the counter. And the two way, well, the front three of Palace have been a real handful first half. There is the half time whistle, and it is a deserved lead for Crystal Palace here at Anfield. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace one. Crystal Palace taking the lead through Eza and Mark, seven yards out from Mitchell's cross from the left after 14 minutes. Three minutes later, had it not been for the brilliance of Andy Robertson from Mateta's goal-bound effort with a terrific goal-line clearance, it would have actually been increased. Liverpool, with Endo hitting the crossbar and Henderson saving from Diaz, haven't done enough and there is work to do for Liverpool. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace one. Ian, thank you. Um, what a story unfolding then at Anfield. Neil Leonard, I mean, it's pretty much what we said before the game kicked off. Liverpool can't keep clean sheets. They've conceded another goal today. And they've had lots of promising positions and haven't been able to capitalise on any of them. Fletcher, they've been poor. They've given the ball away far too easily. They've given the ball away in bad areas. They started off really sloppily. I mean, they got a warning sign early on when Mitchell put a cross in almost in the first minute. And Alisson came and punched it away. And that was the, that set the tone for the first half. There's not been a, a huge reaction. The one player who's been a real driving force for Liverpool has been Robertson. But you've got to give uh, Palace a lot of credit. They've looked a really good side. And with Eze and Elise and the team, particularly down that left-hand side, Eze has plundered Liverpool. You know, the gap between Canati and, and Bradley at times has been a chasm. And he is really enjoying himself out there. But... They've got to, you know, get more snap into their passes and certainly work the back three a lot more because they've, through the midfield, through the lines, they've been very poor. I'm pinching Ian's statistic before the game, but it's relevant now. I think he said that Crystal Palace had taken the lead or scored the first goal in five of their last six matches. The issue they've had under Oliver Glasner is holding on to the lead and that is the challenge that they're faced with now in the second half at Anfield. Yeah, look, look Fletch, there could easily have been two or three up here. I know Liverpool hit the bar and one decent chance from Diaz but the clear cut chances have all come from uh, counter attacks from Palace and Mateta really when he was 1v1 should have scored he shouldn't have allowed or Robertson shouldn't have had the chance to get back but you got to say it was brilliant work from Robertson and we could easily be looking at 2-0 here they've been flat Liverpool he needs to get some dynamism into the midfield and play the ball a lot quicker because it's been far too slow Neil, thank you. Big second half to come then for Liverpool at Anfield. Crystal Palace leading to Ezra's goal. Uh, is this going to be uh, one of these big twists in a title race? Three teams fighting Manchester City top. Liverpool with a chance to go past them, but they've got to find goals in the second half at Anfield. It's half time at the London Stadium as well. Fulham leading there. Sahail Sahi. Yes, they are, Darren. West Ham nil. Fulham won. Anders Pereira, the star performer for the visitors. He's got the goal and he could have had a further two. West Brom, they started the brighter with a golden chance for Mikel Antonio. And then after nine minutes, Mavra Panos, the West Ham centre-half, he made a mistake inside his own penalty area, which Pereira pounced on and smashed in for the goal. Since the goal, Fulham have been on top with Pereira and Paulinia both having moments to extend the lead. West Ham second best so far. Half-time here, Darren. West Ham nil, Fulham one. Thank you, Hale. Second half commentary on five sports extra for that one. So Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace one, West Ham nil, Fulham won the half-time scores in the early games in the Premier League. Half past four, we'll bring you full commentary of Arsenal versus Aston Villa from the Emirates. We'll also get reaction from Ross County. They beat Rangers in the Scottish Premiership and head to the Emirates for the first time today. But first, let's get the latest BBC News with James Wickham. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thanks, Darren. Good afternoon. Israel says its confrontation with Iran is not over after Tehran fired more than 300 drones and missiles at it overnight. The Israeli Defence Minister says despite 99% of those being shot down, the country must be prepared for every scenario. Iran has warned of a much bigger response if Israel retaliates and has told the US it will attack American bases if Washington helps the Israelis hit back. The US says it does not want to see the situation escalate. Here, the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has confirmed that RAF planes shot down a number of the Iranian drones. G7 leaders are holding urgent talks. Here's our political correspondent Pete Saul. The Prime Minister's key message, though, de-escalate. He'll be involved in this meeting of G7 leaders later on this afternoon, and the emphasis on that will be very much on how we draw a line under what has just happened without having to talk about any further military intervention. 
The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has condemned the attack, saying he was deeply alarmed about the very real danger of a devastating escalation. The Security Council will hold an emergency meeting later, and both Saudi Arabia and China have appealed for calm. We'll have updates here on Five Live through the afternoon and a new special with Johnny Iansen from 7.30pm this evening. In other news, legal teams representing more than 250 survivors of the Manchester Arena bombing say they're suing MI5. An inquiry into the 2017 terror attack found it may have been prevented if the agency acted on the intelligence it had about the bomber. And a vigil has been taking place near a shopping centre in Sydney, where six people were killed on Saturday in a knife attack. Twelve others, including a baby, were wounded when a man began stabbing shoppers before being shot dead by police. Let's take a journey back to 2003. Canadian sensation Avril Lavigne was turning the music industry upside down. But what if I told you that the Avril Lavigne we know and love might not be the same Avril? What? I'm Joanne McNally and I'm doing a deep dive into a notorious internet conspiracy. Who replaced Avril Lavigne? Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Darren Fletcher on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. So the second half to come from Anfield shortly. Liverpool trailing Crystal Palace by a goal to nil. And over on Sports Extra, you can hear West Ham against Fulham. Half time in the London Derby. Fulham leading that one by one goal to nil. So earlier today, Tottenham made it through to their first Women's FA Cup final. They needed extra time to see off Leicester 2 1. Here's Martha Thomas, who scored the winner. I'm over the moon for, uh, for the team. We, uh, we dug really deep. This is something that we've wanted and I'm just so chuffed that we got over the line. What was going through your head when you saw that ball swung into the area? Uh, at first I thought Luana was going to head it um, and she did but she flicked it on and then I just thought you've got to get in front of this defender. Um, I didn't want penalties so yeah I'm just, I'm just so happy for us. We dug deep and came from behind again and won. Sum this up for the team because Tottenham Hotspur are going to an FA Cup final for the first time. It's huge. Um, I, I lost the words, but we're such a tight knit group that work hard for each other, and I'm just so chuffed for all of us. Betty Glover with the questions there. And Spurs will face either Chelsea or Manchester United in the final. Sani Rudravadula is watching this one at the Lee Sports Village. Well, 22 minutes have elapsed since Manchester United won Chelsea. Nearly took the lead inside that first minute. It was a good cross from Leah Galton. Uh, finished first time by Lucia Garcia. But it came from a mistake at the back by Eve Perisette trying to play the ball back to Hannah Hampton. And a weak clearance. United so far have actually matched Chelsea despite the big chasm between them in the league. It's a good 14 points between them. United, though, proving to be a good competition for the holders. It's Manchester United 1, Chelsea 0. Now, there was a big result and a big shock at the top of the Scottish Premiership where Ross County claimed their first ever victory over Rangers, beating them by three goals to two. The result means that Celtic remain four points clear at the top, but Rangers do have a game in hand. Let's hear from Ross County's interim manager, Don Cowie. Well, I'm delighted for the, the whole football club, you know, it was built upon a very good team performance today. You know, people will get the headlines individually, but I thought collectively as a as a team we were excellent. Uh, first half, I thought we maybe deserved a bit more out of it in terms of what we put in. The message at half time was, you know, to keep that going and build on it and be positive. And you know, we started the second half excellently, and then you get a bit nervous, you know, at the end of the game. But just delighted for everyone. It's a big three points for us. So Celtic remain four points clear at the top. Rangers have a game in hand. There's still a game to play um, in the Scottish Premiership at Celtic Park between those two clubs between now and the end of the season. In rugby, there's Champions Cup quarter-final action, which is just about to get underway between Toulouse and Exeter. Adam Whitty's watching this one. Yeah, and whoever wins today will face Harlequins for a place in the final. Exeter could make it three English teams out of four in the last four should they win. Northampton and Quinns already having booked their place. Exeter unchanged from the quarter-final win at Bath. International Slade, Faye Waboso, Jenkins uh, and uh, many more, among, and Roots rather, among the starting 15. But they're yet to win away in any competition this year. So can they get past the five-time European champions to lose? Stacked full of world-class talent, including superstars star halfback pairing Roman Untermach and Antoine Dupont. If they do, they will probably have achieved the toughest task in European club rugby. Kick-off just a few minutes away. 
Adam, thank you. The women's Six Nations, France have beaten Italy by 38 points to 15. And in the second women's FA Cup semi-final, the deadlock's been broken. Sammy. Uh, well, yes, a second goal now for Manchester United. Just after you came to me, a lovely cross from Ella Toon from the left-hand side. And 36-year-old Rachel Williams was there to head home. She won the FA Cup back in 2012 with Birmingham City. She might have another chance at the moment. It's Manchester United 2, Chelsea 0. So Manchester United on course, Tottenham Hotspur already there. Now from 8 o'clock tonight, Mark Chapman and the Five Live golf team will be live from Augusta National for the conclusion of this year's Masters. World number one, Scotty Scheffler leads going into the final round. He's seven under par, one shot clear of the field. And we can hear from the leader on how he's preparing for the final round. Managing my energy, managing my expectations. Um, you know, I've, I've talked about it a little bit, but I, I do have high expectations for myself, and um, I try to do my best to get that stuff out of the way in the morning. And by the time I get to the course, it's kind of getting into my own little world and just trying to hit shots. Um, you know, being patient out there, I think, is really important. Um, I think I, I try to feed off the energy from the crowd a little bit. It's nice walking onto these tee boxes and getting a nice ovation. It's it's a really nice feeling to have the crowd behind you, and uh, I try to embrace that as much as possible out there. So that's uh, Scotty Scheffler. You can listen to the final round on Five Live from eight o'clock tonight with a whole Five Live golf team and see whether he can get a second green jacket or whether somebody can come from behind and pip him to it. So 4.30, we'll be at the Emirates today for Arsenal against Aston Villa. We can say good afternoon for the first time this afternoon to Chris Wise. Chris, how much are you looking forward to this one? Hello, Fletch. Yeah, very much so. You find me at the moment, I'm just down uh, by the tunnel here at the Emirates Stadium, but there is such a sense of anticipation. I arrived about three hours before kickoff and already even then outside the stadium, there were thousands of people milling around. There's a real sense of occasion here because Arsenal, of course, know that with every weekend that passes and with every win that they tick off and how many of those have they got already in 2024, they are going that little bit closer to getting that first Premier League title in 20 years. So there's an awful lot of excitement building here. It's going to be interesting, Chris, what Mikel Arteta does because he's faced with this dilemma of he knows he's probably got to win every game because he's expecting Manchester City to do that. But he's also aware that he's got Bayern Munich to come in the Champions League on Wednesday. I think that the team that he picks is going to be fascinating. It is. I mean, for me, really, Fletch, there's there's two positions that are up for grabs in this Arsenal team at the moment, and that's left back. And I'd imagine that Alexander Zinchenko will go back in there this afternoon. We saw Jakob Kivior, of course, play there against Bayern Munich during the week, but he was taken off at half time and perhaps didn't have the greatest 45 minutes. And then obviously on that left attacking part of that Arsenal front three, Gabriel Martinelli, you imagine would get the nod, but does he bring Gabriel Jesus in today just to freshen things up a little bit? So he does have a couple of choices, Mikel Arteta. Whether he moves anyone else around within his 11, I'm not too sure he will because, frankly, as important as that Champions League game is to them out in Munich on Wednesday night, this this today is is imperative, really, for Arsenal. And they're going to have to show that they're capable on, on fighting on two fronts between now and the end of the season if they're going to go all the way and take that Premier League title that they crave so much. Yeah, two sides to every story, of course. No Douglas Luiz today. He's suspended for Aston Villa. But the way it looks for the race for the top four, I mean, if they could get anything today, that's going to be significant for them from a Villa standpoint. Massive, absolutely huge, especially off the back of what happened to Tottenham yesterday um, because that, that mauling at Newcastle United, I imagine Aston Villa probably didn't expect that to happen, if truth be told. So suddenly the dial has moved back in their direction. They, they haven't even played Aston Villa so far this weekend and they've gone from fifth into fourth. So what an opportunity for them to double down on that, that position here. But the, the really interesting dynamic for me, Darren, about this game in terms of from an Aston Villa perspective is that Arsenal have had an extra 48 hours to prepare for this game. They played on Tuesday. Villa played in Europe on Thursday and had that taxing game against Lille as well where they were worked particularly hard. Plus with the injuries that Unai Emery is dealing with at the moment and as you say, no Douglas Luiz today because of suspension as well. So what will this Villa team look like and how much battery life will there be in the legs when we get underway at 430 Chris, looking forward to it. So that's to come at half past four. Chris Wise alongside Danny Gabadon. Uh, don't forget West Ham Fulham is on five sports extra. 1-0 to Fulham in the London derby at the London Stadium. Let's head back to Anfield where it's a big 45 minutes coming up here for Liverpool, Ian Dennis. I've just seen the goal back again from various angles. I actually wonder whether any player's been that free to score a goal against Liverpool on that pitch all season. 
We've just lost you there towards the end, Darren, because it coincided with the team coming out. I was just making the point, I mean, seeing the goal from various angles, I actually wonder whether any player has been that free to score a goal on that pitch against Liverpool all season. There wasn't a red shirt anywhere near, Ezra. No, no, from the cross from, uh, from Mitchell, he was given so much space. It was like he was taking a walk across Stanley Park, wasn't it, with the amount of room that he had either side of him. Canate didn't pick him up, Van Dijk didn't pick him up. Uh, Liverpool, though, have responded with making a change at half-time. Dominic Saboslai has come on and he has replaced Endo. Crystal Palace, well worth their lead. White shirts, sky blue shorts, uh, haven't made a change. We are back underway. BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds. Alisson in goal. Back four of Bradley, Van Dijk, Canate and Robertson for Liverpool. McAllister, Saboslai and Jones in the midfield. Salah, Nunez and Diaz are the front three. Liverpool all in red, playing from left to right, attacking the cop end against a Crystal Palace side in their white shirts and sky blue shorts that have Henderson in goal. A back three of Klein, Anderson and Lerma. Munoz and Mitchell are the wing-backs right and left, respectively. Hughes, Wharton, Eza, Elise and Mateta. The referee is Chris Kavanagh. And I would sense that, Neil Lennon, you're not surprised that Endo has made way for Sabosley. No, he had to make a change. There were two one pierced in midfield. Sabosley will give them energy and dynamism, but there's a, a worry here at the minute, Ian. Connor Bradley going to the challenge with Ezzy, and he's come out worse. Trent Alexander-Arnold is amongst the substitutes. Bradley getting tended to for Liverpool. When you think back that during Covid times they suffered, I think it was six successive defeats here at Anfield, but in front of supporters, Liverpool's record, they've lost just one of their last 113 home league games in front of fans at Anfield. That was against Leeds United. Listen, don't talk to me about Covid, I went through the same thing at Celtic that season. As soon as the fans came back, Celtic were back to their best on the range, so I know exactly what Jurgen was going through without the without the fans, they're not the same club, they're not the same team. It's the same with big clubs like Celtic and your traditional big clubs. But they're not going to take any risks with Connor Bradley. Uh, Trent Alexander Arnold is going to be coming on. So although they made that half-time change this will be the first of three opportunities to make alterations in the second half and Trent Alexander-Arnold who's been back in training this week he was an unused substitute against Atalanta on Thursday he's missed 12 games with a, a knee injury the England international is going to be coming on and Connor Bradley who's uh, done well as he's deputised the uh, Northern Ireland international is going to make way for Alexander-Arnold. So there is an early stoppage to the second half here at Anfield, where Liverpool trail Crystal Palace by a goal to nil. And Conor Bradley is being helped off the pitch. Yeah, he's a super young player, super talent, not only for Liverpool, but for Northern Ireland. He scored the winner last month against Scotland. Uh, it's really sad to see him go off. He just seemed to go over on his ankle. It could be a bit of ligament damage. And it must be bad for him to go off because he's not—he's a hardy boy, you know. It's exactly what Liverpool didn't want either. Not just the, the changing, but just the loss of momentum already. Well, there's a big hug for Trent Alexander-Arnold and then there's a huge roar. The hug came from Jurgen Klopp. The roar came from the Anfield crowd as he takes to the field and Liverpool, three minutes into the second half, are forced to make an, another substitution as they still trail by a goal to nil in a game, realistically, that they have to win. Crystal Palace created a number of chances in that first half. They're leading by a goal to nil. A Crystal Palace team that inflicted the first ever defeat when Jurgen Klopp was Liverpool manager. It was his seventh game in charge. They won by two goals to one back in 2015. As the ball is hit, hopefully, downfield by Canate and claimed by Henderson. It's going to be fascinating watching Alexander Arnold. You know he's been out for a while, in and out, you know, for a while. But um, you know, if he does go wandering, you know, as he could take full advantage of that as well. But uh, when he's on the ball, he needs a super player, as we know. Henderson holding on to the ball, flat clearance, straight it goes to McAllister. Sabosly the substitute to Alexander Arnold. Salah under pressure didn't keep the ball in play. It will be a Crystal Palace throw. I mean, you mentioned it, well, we both mentioned it in the first half, you know, this unusual looking back three. 
but Lerma for a midfielder, he has done exceptionally well today. Ian, he's been outstanding. He's been so aggressive in the tackle. He's read the game brilliantly, he's covered the ground well, and it looks like he's played there all his career. He's been brilliant first half, really aggressive in the challenge and really good on the ball, obviously, because he's a midfield player. But it just shows the flexibility of these kind of players, you know, they can slot into different positions and make it look comfortable. Crystal Palace without a win in 10 away games in the Premier League since Burnley in early November, still lead by a goal to nil. Five minutes into the second half, Anderson hoists it out towards the far side, headed on by Munoz. Canate to Van Dijk, early forward ball to McAllister midway through his own half, out towards Robertson, far side the left. Nunez makes the run, Anderson though again is there to head it out of play. Jones wants to take it quickly on that far side the left. After this game, our attentions will turn to Arsenal against Aston Villa. Commentary of that from 4.30 at the Emirates. Liverpool at the moment not taking the opportunity to go to the top of the table. Arsenal might. Manchester City yesterday beating Luton Town, boosting their goal difference. Talked about goal difference earlier on in the programme. Today for Liverpool, it's all about securing the three points. Mitchell... That's it run out of play. Marshall's it safely out for a throw. Can't fault Crystal Palace, really, can you? It just looked a really good save, competent. Just wonder how much the first half might have taken out of them. We'll see as we go along in the second half. But yeah, they look comfortable at the minute. I haven't seen Liverpool give the ball away as much under no pressure in for a long, long time. I don't know if it's a psychological thing or fatigue from Thursday night, but they've got to shake it off now. You know, they've got about 45, 50 minutes to win this game and keep themselves in the title home. Well, Liverpool who've won the most points from losing positions in the Premier League against the Crystal Palace side that have lost the most points from winning positions with 23. Here is McAllister on the halfway line left of the centre circle seven minutes into the second half here on five live. Stroked in field by Jones to Van Dijk, closed by Mateta, Canate. Press then from Eze, blocked by Hughes. Header from Mateta goes straight to Sabosli, who gives it away. Neil Lennon just talking about Liverpool being sloppy. And now Hughes can come forward, and he chips the ball into the path of Eze. Eze with a first-time cross, Elise had made the run. Going to be kept alive by Munoz, far side the right. Munoz beats his man, pulls it back. Elise, there's a man over, it's Wharton. Plays finished, blocked by his own player. Mateta goes there into the challenge with Sabosli. The referee gives the free kick in favour of Liverpool inside their own penalty area. So lucky. Liverpool are so lucky still be in this game. That's uh, Alexander-Arnold give the ball away, then Sabozzi give the ball away, and Palace almost punished them. Now it's with Robertson. Robertson darting in towards the penalty area, then he slips, taken over by Nunez. And Nunez, the angle was extremely tight. And it goes out of play for a goal kick. Champions Cup quarter-final, Toulouse-Exeter, latest from Adam Whitty. Toulouse 7, Exeter 3, Toulouse have stifled a promising Exeter start. Henry Slade's early penalty cancelled out by a gorgeous move, finished off by France fly-half Roman Untermach under the post. Toulouse 7, Exeter 3, 10 minutes gone. Manchester United's women lead Chelsea in the second FA Cup semi-final by two goals to nil, live on BBC One. The right to play Tottenham, who beat Leicester City 2-1 after extra time. In the Scottish Premiership, Celtic still have a four-point lead over Rangers after Ross County beat second-place Rangers 3-2 earlier. West Ham nil, Fulham 1 in the other game in the Premier League at 2. That's on Sports Extra. We've got the final round of the US Masters from Augusta on BBC Radio 5 Live from 8 o'clock tonight. But this is the Premier League. BBC Sounds and 5 Live Sport, eight minutes into the second half, where Liverpool still trail by that Eberichia as a goal after 14 minutes. Bizarrely, Crystal Palace have won more games in the Premier League at Anfield than they actually have at Selhurst Park. And they're looking for a fourth success here at this ground. Alexander-Arnold, diagonal ball, inside, Sabosli to Salah. Salah with Lerma, gets a throw. Back it goes to McAllister, Alexander-Arnold to Canate. On the halfway line now to Van Dijk. Runs forward, left of the centre circle. Out towards Robertson, central area. Just in from the left touch line. Van Dijk finds McAllister centrally. Hughes goes to close him down. Canate passes the ball forward. Jones now to Nunez. Nunez with the turn. Holds onto the ball. Works it onto his right foot. Back seals it to Salah. Salah with the cross. 
Jones was there, challenged by Munoz, goes out for a corner kick. Corner kick to Liverpool, still trailing. Do you know what? Any time they've had good build-up, it's been Canal. He's played it into the, the forward area. It was a great ball into, I think it was Nunez. Or Diaz, Diaz the Nunez, Nunez little back heel to Salah. Good ball in. Brilliant defending from Munoz, I have to say. You know, that, that was a goal. You know, Curtis Jones just about to open his body up. Nun, uh, Munoz gets a touch on it. Corner kick, downward header. Nunez! Saved by Henderson by his legs from close range. And then the header from Wharton goes out of play. From the downward header, it was hit straight at the keeper. And Henderson denies it. Ian, he's got the score. He's got the whole goal. He's just hit it straight at Henderson. Brilliant reactions from Henderson, but wow, what a, that's the biggest chance of the day by anyone. He's six yards out, the ball's bounced up lovely for him, and he's hit it straight at the goalkeeper. Great save from Henderson, but should have been a goal. So Boss lie with a corner on this right-hand side, flying header by Lerma at the near side of the six-yard box, went across the face of goal, glanced off his head, Salah sends over the cross from the left, so Boss lie tries to lay it off first time, doesn't control it, Crystal Palace are able to break, they're always a threat on the counter-attack, Nunez stops Eze, so Boss lie tidies up, McAllister now comes forward, it's done by the cop, Nunez now right corner of the area, Nunez with the cross, Salah's heavy touch, directs the ball straight towards Henderson, Palace still lead by a goal, to nil. Yeah, I'm not sure it was directed for Salah, it might have been Diaz, but much better reactions when they lost the ball there. Nunez and Sabo say working really hard to get it back and recycle the ball and start again. And now you can hear it in the crowd, the crowd are feeling it as well. Better spell for Liverpool this, far better. Henderson clears it away, all in green away towards our right. Canate back pedalling, heads it forward, cushion header to Alexander Arnold from Sabos Lighting and International switches play out towards Robertson midway through his own half. Shy of the halfway line now, 11 minutes into the second half here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Not many people saw this with a title twist. They might have predicted when you look at Liverpool's run of fixtures coming up Fulham away, Everton away, West Ham away. Indeed, they're not back at Anfield until the 5th of May against Tottenham Hotspur. But Crystal Palace to put a spanner in the works here as the clearance from Anderson, only as far as Robertson. Forward ball is behind Jones. Another errant ball out for a Crystal Palace throw. There's been too much of that today, hasn't there? Just misunderstandings between, you know, pairs. And again, you know, Curtis Jones has gone ahead of the ball before uh, Robertson's even got under control. And as he's played it, he's on the moves. Just breaks up the momentum again. Sometimes you read a statistic and you think, you know, it's a little bit bizarre or quirky. Uh, Liverpool have, have scored more goals in the last 15 minutes of games this season than they have in the first half. That's incredible. 27 in the last 15 minutes. They've scored 25 in the first half this season. So in well, terms, this is set up for a senior, isn't it? It's set up for a. You think a grandstand finish anyway, but the. I always think you've got to get a, a goal in the first 15, 20 minutes of the second half just to give you that impetus for the last 20 minutes or so. Crystal Palace fans will not need reminding that they've conceded 22 goals in the last 15. If we're to get a grandstand finale here at Anfield in the sunshine, won't do much for the nerves of Liverpool as they still trail. Munoz chests the ball back, cleared by Klein, only as far as Curtis Jones, Wharton battling away in the midfield. Said he was being impeded, the referee says not. Liverpool now with McAllister, infield to Alexander-Arnold. Crystal Palace, to their credit, though, are still working so hard in the midfield. Hughes, Wharton, Elise and Eze. As the ball is rolled out towards that far side. How's it started at West Ham, Sahel Sahi? We've played an hour now here, Ian. It's still West Ham nil, Fulham 1. Much better from West Ham in this second half, but the best chance in this second 45 minutes has fallen to Fulham once again. It will be played through from midfield, inside the penalty, a right-hand side, right-footed shot, top save from Fabianski, low down to his right-hand side. Still West Ham nil, Fulham 1. And commentary of that on Sports Extra. Van Dijk, forward ball out towards that far side, the left. Diaz now takes over, running forward on that left touchline, sends over the cross, blocked by Munoz, his fellow Colombian, behind for a corner kick in front of the cop, 1-0 Palace. There's definite momentum sh shifting because Palace are starting to look a little bit sloppy in possession. And Liverpool have got the forward momentum now. They're forcing the ball, they're forcing the game, exactly what you'd expect from Liverpool. Palace are just starting to wobble a little bit. Corner kick, far side the left, it's an out swinger, comes out towards Salah, 
bounced away off his left thigh and just enabled Crystal Palace to get the ball away. We're approaching the hour mark. Palace still have the lead. Alexander-Arnold volleys the ball in field. Canate with a little flick. Van Dijk tries to tee up Diaz. Stumbles on the edge of the area. Crystal Palace still working manfully. Saboslai mishits that and completely slices it high and into the cop and out for a goal kick and it's still Palace with the advantage. Again, wrong option. So he has a shot on Zabaze, but it's high weight and handsome and he should have just took a touch rule the way the Robertson kept the kept the pressure on Palace. It just gives Palace a little bit of a breather. Because it just just come off it a little bit at the minute. The midfield's still working ever so hard, but the front three at the minute can't get back into the game the way they were in the first half. That uh, defeat against Atalanta on Thursday was Liverpool's first at home in 34 games since Real Madrid in the Champions League of February 2023. You have to go back to October 2022 for their last defeat at home in the Premier League against Leeds. Since then, undefeated in 28, but trailing by a goal to nil as Eze, the goal scorer, just pulls the ball away from Saboslai, tries to release Mateta. Runs in front of Canate, who's now back goal side, holds the ball up, tries to drop his shoulder, they've doubled up on Mateta, uses his strength to get away from McAllister. Canate, though, wrestles it away from Mateta. He's pinned back inside his own half, finds an outlet in his goalkeeper, Allison to clear it, headed back by Lerma. Hughes tried to direct his header towards Mitchell. Alexander-Arnold came under pressure from Morton. I mean, the work rate from the midfielders from Crystal Palace has been eye-catching. They've great in there, haven't they? Great, Wharton and Hughes have picked up so many scraps and 50-50s have done a great job. Head down, Robertson runs forward, cross strikes the back of Diaz, presents Anderson with a header away. Hughes towards Wharton, Wharton lets it settle, back it goes to Clyde, forward towards Wharton again, takes it neatly into his stride. Elise, challenge, referee, has a good look at it, Mateta holds onto the ball under pressure, back it goes towards Hughes, Hughes slides into the challenge, loses out, referee gives a free kick in favour of Liverpool. Hughes is not happy about that, they've taken the free kick quickly. Out towards Luis Diaz, Liverpool still looking for an equaliser. Nunez can't run it forward, blocked. Saboslai to Salah, laid off. Alexander-Arnold hits it first time right-footed on the rise, just outside the D into the cot. Still Palace lead by a goal to nil, they have a goal kick. Yeah, it's good from Liverpool, good pressure, but I did feel there was a foul on Hughes. But they worked it well from a quick free kick. Diaz stepping inside, goes all the way across to uh, Alexander-Arnold, gets the shot away. But again, no real conviction in it, Ian. It's a half chance, really. Just seemed to be a little bit rushed with the final bit of play, Liverpool. And that comes with the tension, obviously, chasing the game. Liverpool have it all to do. Time is ticking away. 62 minutes played. Palace still with the lead here on 5 Live. Commentary from 4.30 to come. Arsenal against Aston Villa. Champions League quarter-finals will give you a choice of listing on Wednesday. Manchester City, Real Madrid. On 5 Live, Bayern against Arsenal is on Sports Extra. And on Thursday, the Europa League quarter-final, we will be in Bergamo for Atalanta against Liverpool. And they've got it all to do to try and turn it around in that second leg after they were humbled here against the Italian side. Alexander-Arnold clears it away downfield. Nunez will give chase. Lerma lets it run out of play for a throw to Crystal Palace. Update in the Champions Cup in the Rugby Union, Adam Whitting. Toulouse 7, Exeter 13, the Chiefs lead, lead in the south of France, Ethan Roots barging down the door to dot down after a tap and go. Great start from the visitors, Toulouse 7, Exeter 13, 18 minutes gone. There is activity on the bench down below for Liverpool, they've got Elliot, they've got Jota, Gakpo as well, you can see that Jota's going to be coming on and Gakpo as well. So we said about time running out, they're calling for reinforcements, Jurgen Klopp because they can't afford to lose this game, can't afford to draw it, they've got to win it. Here is Alexander-Arnold, swings over the cross from the right-hand side, headed away well by Munoz, picked up by Curtis Jones, far side the left, in the sunshine here at Anfield. Van Dijk just outside the centre circle of the Crystal Palace half, the white shirts drop behind the ball. Jones midway through that Palace half. Back it goes to Van Dijk. Full backs are pushed on. Canate gets the ball back from Saboslai. Then he goes out to his left for Van Dijk. Van Dijk waits. The Liverpool crowd try and play their part. Saboslai along the ground. Alexander Arnold, early ball in field. Luis Diaz can't roll away from Anderson. Too strong for him. Mitchell on this near side, the left. Down the line it goes. Ezra out of play. It'll be a Liverpool throw. 
And it will be Gakpo for Nunez and Jota coming on for Luis Diaz. The changes that will be made very, very soon by Jurgen Klopp. Those two substitutes are just getting the final instructions here at Anfield. We've been playing for 64 minutes. Liverpool still trail. There's a challenge from Munez on Jones. Free kick to Liverpool. And it's quickly taken as the ball is played out by Diaz. Out the far side, work it back. Then in central area for Alexander-Arnold. Van Dijk out to the left-hand side. Back with Van Dijk once again. Substitutes are limbering up in front of us. Liverpool being patient, just trying to prise open this Palace defence. Salah can't find a way through at the minute, just playing in front of Palace. Yeah, but they've definitely got a clamp on the game now. You know, Palace look, you know, a little bit tired. Ez is not having any sort of effect on the game now. They've sort of uh, clamped down on that sort of area of the pitch that he was getting a lot of joy in in the first half. And now it's all possession for Liverpool at the minute. Great ball. Ball towards Salah, running forward, right side of the area. Knocks the ball back with his head to Saboslai. Saboslai's cross, charged down by Lerma. Forward ball to Eze, lays it in field towards Hughes. First time ball for Mateta to give chase. Canate comes across, out of play, it goes for a throw. These are the changes that will take place. Meanwhile, let's go to Manchester United Chelsea in the Women's FA Cup semi-final. Sani Rodovagela. Well, the holders have a foothold in this game. It's now Manchester United 2, Chelsea 1. Lauren James, the former Red, side-footing inside the area, high into the roof of the net. Chelsea back in it, it's Manchester United 2, Chelsea 1. We are into the final moments of injury time. So Nunez comes off, Gakpo is on, Luis Diaz comes off, Diego Jota comes on. He came on a, the bench against Atalanta on Thursday night after missing the last 11 with a knee injury. And now you've got a front three of Salah, Gakpo and Jota. And as with 24 minutes remaining, plus added on time, Liverpool need realistically need to find two goals as they trail 1-0. Yeah, and they don't want to leave it too late. You don't want to equalise your nearly ninth minute and sort of scramble for the winner. They're in control of the game. They're still not playing their brilliant football, but they've definitely got control of the game. They've been a lot better defensively, certainly in the second half. It's just about getting that breakthrough now. Ian. Ball for Saboslai. Comes back towards it. Mitchell, Gakpo, quickly involved. Links up with Salah. Gakpo with a cutback. Jones couldn't take it in his stride. Much to the agony of the, uh, the cock. Robertson with a cross. Blocked by Klein on that far side. All he needed to do was just get a touch, did Jones, with a goal in front of him gaping. Liverpool now knocking at the door. Gakpo now on that left-hand side. We're almost midway through the second half. Crystal Palace defending stoutly. Still leading by a goal to nil. No. Ball played forward straight through to Henderson. Gathers it in safely. Massive chance here. Brilliant play from... Uh, <clears throat> Salah and Gakpo and a brilliant pullback from Gakpo how Curtis Jones doesn't get contact on it I just don't know they're looking at a handball here as well but not too sure that the, his arm's out really Andy Robertson was adamant it was a penalty we're looking at it again uh, I think it'd be difficult to give that Jordan Ayew is going to be coming on Elise is the player who's going to be coming off uh, he had that last 16 minutes against Manchester City, but they'll have to just manage him and nurture him and get him, ease him back in, will Michael Luce after that thigh injury. So, Jordan, are you to come on? Half-time, Manchester United 2, Chelsea 1 in that second Women's FA Cup semi-final with the right to play Tottenham in the final. So, are you is on for Elise. And we're midway through the second half. So, a quarter of the game remains and Liverpool still trail by a goal to nil. Here is Jota, far side, Gakpo on the left-hand side, coming in field now. Finds Alexander-Arnold inside the centre circle, forward ball. Jota's made the run, Anderson has been immense at the back for, uh, for Crystal Palace with the header away. Only as far as Alexander-Arnold, short diagonal ball to Saboslai. Now out towards Salah, early ball in, Saboslai plays it across and Anderson with the outstretched clearance in front of his own goal, directs it up and over the bar and into the cup for a corner kick. Oh, what outstanding football. Great one-two between Sal and Zabaze, and then a brilliant cross, and just outstanding defending, world-class defending from Anderson. How he got to that and kept it out of the net is beyond me. Much, much better from Liverpool. They've been really good second half. You feel as if a goal is coming. Zabaze with the corner. It's an outswinger. Van Dijk with the header was off target, and desperately trying to get on the end of it was Jota with a lunge at the far post, and it went probably a yard in front of him, and out it goes for a... 
goal kick and Henderson is testing the patience of the cop and the Liverpool supporters as he bides his time with the goal kick. Just over 20 minutes remain. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace one. Really good last 15 minutes seeing from Liverpool. Much, much better, much more like them. All right, they've been sloppy a little bit in possession, but they're really trying to force us. You can't fault their attitude. It's just that, just that killer touch now they need just to top it off. And then if it gets the 1-1, you know it's going to be the Alamo for the, the remainder of the game. Despite going back to the top of the table last night, Manchester City's destiny before today was still out of their own hands. The advantage still was with Arsenal and Liverpool if they were to win their remaining games. Liverpool would lose that right. We'll have commentary of Arsenal Aston Villa from 4.30. But Liverpool are still pushing as they trail. Gakpo on the left-hand side with the cross. Headed out by Lerma under pressure. Helped further away by Wharton. Headed back by Canate. Stabbed forward by Munoz. Yayu loses the ball. Gakpo, there's an intensity about Liverpool now. Jones with the cross. Jota couldn't get there. Mitchell tucked in. Prevents it from reaching Salah. And Crystal Palace can break. And Ayu was tripped by Jones. He's going to get a yellow card. That'll be a free kick. We mentioned that game at the Emirates. Team news from Chris Wise. More changes from the draw with Bayern Munich. Zinchenko, Trossard and Jesus in for Kivior, Jorginho and Martinelli. Villa have made two alterations from Thursday. Bailey goes to the bench. Douglas Luiz is suspended. Diaby and Zaniolo come in. Danny Gabidon joining Chris Wise for commentary at half four. And there's been a goal at West Ham, Sahel Sahi. A second for Fulham, a second for Andres Pereira on the counter-attack. It's West Ham nil, Fulham two, a raid down the right-hand side. Low ball into the penalty area and he wasn't going to miss from seven yards away. West Ham nil, Fulham two. And after 6.06 from that Arsenal-Aston Villa game, a reminder that the US Masters final round from 8 o'clock with Mark Chapman and the team will be live here on 5 Live. Anderson with that free kick, eventually taken, drilled downfield. Alexander-Arnold's header will go back towards Alisson. And there are 18 minutes remain, and Liverpool still trail by a goal to nil. Yeah, 18-plus add-ons. Yes. So we're looking at a good 20 minutes, plenty of time. But, it, you know, I'm just looking at the body language of the Palace players. Playing went down... Lerma's been holding his hip. He's just starting to look a little bit fatigued, which we felt because it put so much into the first half. You know, Liverpool couldn't play as badly as that again, and to be fair, they are playing very, very well at the minute. It's a boss light infield to Jones. It might still reach the boss light, pulls it back. Trotter, what a block that was! That was Nathaniel Klein. That looked a goal for all the world. And then Nathaniel Klein, not quite on the goal line, but inside his six yard box, gets the block in. Well, suppose they get the other side of Anderson, rolls it back, it's a dolly for Jota, he just roll it in the corner. It's brilliant from Klein to get his body there, but that's an absolute sitter. Corner kick for Liverpool, still trailing 1-0, it's an outswinger from the far side, Van Dijk is up and his header drops and is caught by Henderson, who holds onto it all in green inside his penalty area. 17 minutes remain. <laughs> that's two unbelievable chances you think of the Nunez one in front of the goal and now the Jattel one and the Liverpool fans were thinking and Jurgen Klopp is this going to be our day Henderson at some point I would imagine is going to get a yellow card for time wasting he's starting to test the patience of the Liverpool crowd they'll be putting pressure on referee Chris Kavner meanwhile Chris Kavner awards a free kick in favour of Crystal Palace haven't been as much as an attacking force in this second no, half. No, they haven't. You've got to give Liverpool credit for that. They've tidied up the issues that they had to deal with in the first half. Eze has been very quiet. Obviously, Elise has gone off the pitch. Ayu's on, really, to get Palace up the pitch now. It's basically we have what we hold. But they're hanging on at the minute because Liverpool are really, you know, coming on strong. And to be fair, they've created some great chances here. Well, they've got this free kick. It is left of centre. Midway through the Liverpool half, they're attacking the Anfield Road end, playing from right to left as we look. As of the goal scorer, right-footed curls, it hangs in the air, and Mateta is there! Oh my and goodness! What? Oh my Was that a save from Alisson? Yes. Oh He's hit it at point-blank range, it's rolled up the goalkeeper, Mateta can't believe it. I've never seen anything like that. And it's all the world, the goalies, he puts out a big army in and saves it. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. It's kept Liverpool in the title race. What a strong arm that was from Alisson. Mateta from close range. So Alisson and Robertson in the first half have stopped Palace leading and taking a two-goal lead in this game. Eze with the corner kick, far side the left. Mitchell, far side. Hammered away then by Alexander-Arnold. 
if all of a sudden Palace had gone two to look. But now all of a sudden it's Jones who's released. Jones inside the penalty area. Jones has put it wide. What a chance that was for Liverpool and it has been squandered. This game is bonkers. It's absolute. I've never seen misses like this in my life. What a counter-attack. Brilliant from Gakpo. Releases Jones. He's clean through, one-on-one. -on -one, gets across the defender, steadies himself and puts it wide. It's an incredible miss. And the, the Mateta miss was even worse. Two yards out, blasts it. And Allison makes the save of a, a lifetime. I, that will be reeled over and over again for years to come. What an arm that was. Well, all of a sudden, it's a huge let off at one end for Liverpool because you couldn't see them scoring three goals in 15 minutes, which is what they would have required. And then at the other, a chance to level. And Jones really should have made it 1 1. Oh, he should, yeah. I mean, that's three clear cut chances Liverpool have had. But none as clear cut as a Mateta one. I mean, this game could be 3 3, you know. Um, the lack of finishing, brilliant goalkeeping, it's had a bit of everything. And the whole thing surrounding it all, Ian, is the tension around the stadium and the significance of what lays ahead of us in the next 15 minutes. They're going to be a triple change for Crystal Palace. Riedebelt is going to be coming on. Joel Ward is a, another player. And also Jeffrey Schlupp is uh, another one for, uh, for Crystal Palace and fresh legs as Oliver Glasner looks to get these three points here at Anfield. Nathaniel Klein will go off, that will be Ward who will replace him on the right side of that three-man defence. Nathaniel Klein, a former Liverpool player taking his time. Hughes is the player who's going to be coming off for Riedeveldt. He's worked ever so hard, he turns 29 on Wednesday, it's his birthday. So Riedeveldt, who's missed the last six games, will come on for, uh, for Will Hughes. And the other change will be Jeffrey Schlupp for the goal scorer, Everichia Ezer. So Crystal Palace going into defensive mode, where we're at that time, inside the last 15 minutes, where Liverpool have scored the most goals in the Premier League, Crystal Palace have conceded the most, and the fourth official, amidst all of that, is struggling to work the electronic board, which isn't helping matters. Yeah, and Liverpool players are getting after Chris Kavanagh, telling them to get a move on it's just you know the dark arts if you want to call it that from Crystal Palace they're slowing the game down they're trying to break the momentum up that Liverpool have had but uh, this game is just you know I haven't seen a game like this for a long time in terms of you know quality chances being missed and just the excitement and the tension around the stadium at the minute and what it means to particularly Liverpool at the minute with your experience of winning a title if Liverpool don't win this game I think they're out of it they're out of the championship. yeah I think so yeah and to be honest with you they don't look like a championship winning team today you know even the Mateta chance Ian, it was a free kick it was a free header for Anderson to head it down and Mateta's two yards out with a free hit you know you can't afford to do that there's another turnover Salah gave the ball away tries to win it back slips there is a desperation now inside Anfield amongst the growing frustration anxiety amongst the supporters which you can certainly feel here at Anfield Canate they're scrambling Liverpool and time is running out 12 minutes of normal time remain Curtis Jones out towards Robertson Robertson running forward over the halfway line Palace still lead by a goal to nil Gakpo six yards inside the Palace half Canate out then towards Alexander-Arnold Remember, you have to go back the three years since the last time that Liverpool in back-to-back -back games failed to score here at Anfield. Gakpo on the far side, the left, delivers the cross, headed out by Anderson. Been absolutely outstanding at the back for Palace. Van Dijk forward, Canate plays it, lifts it over the top. It's a heavy touch. Jota can't keep it in play. Goal kick to Crystal Palace and 11 minutes remain. And Jurgen Klopp deep in thought in that technical area well, I think the referee has to have a word with Henderson as well you know he's really sort of milking it now you know the, the time wasting he's going from one side of the box to the other which is his right to do obviously but it's been going on you know for the last 20 minutes now or so and you can feel the frustration not just from the, the fans but the players as well but it's been 
exhilarating to watch this game. Can't take your eyes off it, Ian. And it's certainly full of drama for what's at stake. There is a real jeopardy as Liverpool Jones couldn't take it forward into his path. Desperately trying to win the ball back. They do so. Turnover in the midfield. Jones. Crystal Palace, though, are fighting for everything. Ryderbelt just snapped his way into the challenge. You might remember that 3-3 game at Selhurst Park. It was ten years ago next month when Crystal Palace produced three goals in the last 12 minutes to draw 3-3 at Selhurst Park to dash Liverpool's title hopes that year. We've got 12 minutes remaining. Liverpool need two. There's Van Dijk to McAllister. McAllister 25 yards out. Not much of an atmosphere inside Anfield. There is a sense of growing frustration from this crowd as Mateta comes forward, plays it out towards Schluck, couldn't take it, bypassed him. Forced out wide on this left-hand side. Mitchell infield, Wharton been, had a terrific game in the midfield. Schlupp, that was a weak cross. Allison will claim it, no he won't, Van Dijk will get there before him. Downfield to Salah, hooks it downfield. Alexander-Arnold might have been offside, instead he hits a diagonal ball that was too hurried. Straight through towards Henderson. There's a lack of composure about yeah. Liverpool's play. I thought he picked the wrong ball again, it was just a little round the corner ball that Jota, and Jota was in, the 2v1. He's just trying to lash one across the gap, it was such a high tariff to do and the simple ball was Jota so again there's just that anxiety around the players as well they've needed the goalie and I'm not worried is they might get a goal but it might be too late to win the game Harvey Elliott is going to be coming on for Liverpool when the two sides met at Selhurst Park it was Harvey Elliott who got a 91st minute winner Liverpool need an equaliser first before they can have any notions of a winner here as they're toiling Sabosli out towards Van Dijk Robertson now it's with Curtis Jones final instructions given to Harvey Elliott back it goes to Van Dijk Alexander-Arnold takes over in the centre circle hits the ball forward Salah trying to get round the back Mitchell's header goes in towards the penalty area Anderson again is there to volley the ball away he hasn't missed a trick and his header goes behind for a corner kick. Eight minutes remain, Palace still holding on. And it's going to be Curtis Jones who's going to be coming off for Harvey Elliott. If Liverpool, who've got a habit of scoring late, they're going to leave it very, very late. As they still trail to that Eber Itchit as a goal in the 14th minute here. So Bosley hands on hips, waits in front of the cop Crystal Palace looking for their first win since early November out swinging corner Van Dijk climbs gets something on it Henderson can't get there Van Dijk tries to stab it forward Mateta hammers the ball away inside the six yard area and referee Chris Kavner has noticed a foul free kick to Crystal Palace high fives from Lerma and Henderson Palace know, still I defending. I don't know what the foul was for though, but Henderson's gone fishing and he's he's getting nowhere. The ball bounces off Van Dijk's head really high and Henderson comes to punch it. Can't get there. I don't see what the foul is for. It's just a 50-50 in the box, but again, very frustrating for Liverpool. Great for Palace. They can just slow things down, get a breather, take the sting out of things. And the body language, you know, they're going to keep going, Liverpool. How long's left, Ian? What do you make it? Seven minutes remaining Seven minutes normal plus. time. There will be... At least five? I'd say so, yeah. Liverpool have used up all their subs and what? Palace have used up three or four, so... You'd imagine with him slowing the game down, Henderson as well, the ref's going out on a bit of time, so... But you're looking at maybe 12 minutes to win it. First time in top division history that three teams have had 70 points after 31 games. The title race could be going from three to two with Liverpool losing. Jota's diagonal forward ball, Salah, Lerma holds him off. Lerma tumbles, gets a foot into the challenge to force Salah away from goal. Holds off Mitchell, Salah does well, plays the ball back. McAllister keeps it with Liverpool. Midway through the Palace half though now, towards Robertson. Six minutes remain of normal time here on Five Live and Five Live Sport. Munoz with a tackle on Sabosli, free kick to Liverpool. About eight yards in from the left touchline. Lerma did brilliantly again, the foot race with Salah. You know, he's he's running on fumes at the minute, Lerma, but he stayed with him, dogged to the end. And you've got to give Palace an enormous amount of credit. They've defended heroically at times when they've needed to. 
and they've done it with one recognised centre half so far Carl Fulton, Anderson, Lerma have been uh, outstanding in defence Robertson with this free kick on that far side the left attacking the cop Robertson left footed comes in, Munoz heads the ball away Elliot has a little glance over his shoulder right hand side of the penalty area ball swung in by Alexander Arnold, Lerma there again to head it away, repelled by the Colombian you sense as well, judging by the atmosphere that there is a feeling of resignation from the Liverpool supporters here with just over five minutes remaining, a goal might change all of that, oh you couldn't release Mateta so boss lie, that was risky, tried a, a back pass, almost cut out by an outstretched leg of Mateta. Alisson now plays it forward. Five minutes remain of normal time. Crystal Palace still lead Liverpool by a goal to nil. What a boost this will be ahead of our next commentary for Arsenal against Aston Villa at 4.30. As Crystal Palace now with Mateta, ten yards inside the Liverpool half. He falls to the ground far too easily. Gakpo gets away from the outstretched leg of Wharton, comes on the inside, now hits a diagonal ball. Elliot looks to control it, plays the ball in, takes a deflection into the penalty area. Ward with a clearance. No chances there from Joel Ward. Liverpool won a quick throw, but there's two balls on the pitch. Neil Lennon. Yeah, the fans are wanting Jada to get across Ward and attack that ball. Uh, Elliot did well, dug out a great cross, but Jada just didn't go and attack it and Ward had an easy clearance. Mateta who's led that line very, very well, so often on his own, is going to be coming off. Edward is going to be coming on for Crystal Palace. Haven't had the best of records against Liverpool of late, but Gakpo round the back, checks back into the penalty area with a cross towards the far post. Elliot saved by the leg, the, heart, the hands of Henderson. Liverpool still pressing. Alexander-Arnold on the half volley into the penalty area. Cross comes in, Jota climbs, Anderson off his chest. Has the composure to then clear it away right-footed. Four minutes remain. Palace still lead by a goal to nil. What a win this would be for Crystal Palace. Brilliant in the first half, resilient in the second. Elliot now towards Van Dijk. Van Dijk in the centre circle. Sabos Lai midway through the Crystal Palace half. Now with McAllister. Van Dijk to Canate. Oliver Glasner hopping, feeling every pass at the moment, trying that his side will still keep them at bay. Passing the ball in short triangles, Liverpool at the moment, without really going anywhere. Three minutes remain of normal time. Ideally, they need two goals in this title race as Elliot on the right-hand side passes the ball back into the centre circle. The captain, Van Dijk, facing only his second defeat in the Premier League at home in 98 games. Canate, central position. Van Dijk gets it again. So Boslai provides the width on the far side. Robertson is on the edge of the area. Liverpool still playing in front of Crystal Palace. Two and a half minutes remain. Alexander-Arnold forward, crosses on the run. Tucked in was Ward to head the ball away. Headed by McAllister back towards Van Dijk. Glasner applauds the effort of his Crystal Palace players. Elliot now. Liverpool still looking. Van Dijk now towards McAllister. Rolled out towards the Boslai. Ten yards in from the left touchline. Just on the edge of the shadows of the cop, crosses the ball, Alexander-Arnold off his chest, hammers it into the penalty area, blocked by Lerma, Mitchell couldn't get there, Lerma then again to clear the ball away, Palace will push out, Alisson's actually inside the Palace half. Yeah, it's just one more traffic as you'd expect now, can they get the breakthrough here? Alex can Palace hold on? I mean, it's been a riveting watch, you know, Palace don't deserve to lose it, but Liverpool don't... Uh, yeah, lose the lead, but Liverpool don't deserve to lose the game for me because they've created enough chances to get something out of it. Here is Van Dijk, quickly helps it on its way. Gakpo runs in off the left touch line, cross blocked by Munoz. Behind for another corner kick, under two minutes of normal time remain, live on BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace won. Liverpool, remember, started the day third. They would finish it in third, but the game in hand would they had not taken advantage would remain two points behind City in comes the corner kick Anderson again attacks it heads it away Sir Boss Lai on the stretch out towards McAllister feeding it out towards the left down it goes towards our Elliot can't keep in play Liverpool for all their pressure don't look like scoring but they have done you know what we have to remember is you think of the Nunes chance, you think of the Jota chance, they're clear-cut, the Curtis Jones one-on-one, they're clear-cut chances, they haven't taken them, so 
there is this sort of uh, misnomer that you know they don't, they're not going to score but they have had the chances that's the point that a coach would make however you, you got to take them you know and they haven't done that and they've forced the game second half and they've, they've really had a good goal but you got to give Palace a huge amount of credit they were brilliant first half on the counter attack and they've defended like heroes in the second in the second half and it just shows you and when it comes to there's no easy games in this Premier League no no a Crystal Palace side uh, who winless actually in the last five games since Glasgow won his opening game against Burnley Edward has come on for Mateta as the ball back from Robertson taken high on the chest by Allison, and we are now about to find out how much stoppage time there will be because by my watch the 90 minutes of normal time are all but up and Liverpool still trail by a goal to nil the next instalment of the title race will be at the Emirates Arsenal Aston Villa at 4.30 seven minutes of added on time which we're now into seven minutes of stoppage time here at Anfield it offers albeit late but renewed hope for the optimistic Liverpool supporters inside Anfield Elliot Alexander-Arnold combines with Elliot on the right-hand side. Elliot with the cross, redeveloped with the header away. Alexander-Arnold to McAllister, goes square. to Boslai passes the ball to Gakpo. Left corner of the area. Gakpo delivers the cross in. Off the chest of Jota. Salah is there! And what a run that was by Mitchell. It tracks him every way. And the left wing-back pops up on the far side to run another goal-bound effort wide. It's incredible. He's two yards out. It looks all the world a goal. And Mitchell comes from nowhere and blocks it. Unbelievable. Cross comes in from the corner kick. Heroic defending by Crystal Palace this afternoon. You think that they've prevented three certain goals. Mitchell, the one from Klein earlier on as well. And then the Henderson one from the legs of, uh, of Nunez. We welcome listeners to the BBC World Service. Here we are at Anfield in the closing stages. We're in the first minute. Or in fact, just entered the second minute of the minimum of seven here at Anfield, where Crystal Palace are still leading Liverpool by a goal to nil. A goal from Eberichi Eze in the 14th minute of the game. And Liverpool's title challenge is seriously faltering. Elliot, back it goes. Liverpool camped inside the Palace half, but Palace have defended manfully throughout this second half. Van Dijk waits. Passes the ball towards Alexander-Arnold. Rolls it out towards Elliot. Elliot swings over the cross. Blacked by Aryu. Cleared then by Wharton. Aryu now has to go it alone, the Ghanaian. Runs forward. Short of the halfway line. Has no options. Passes the ball back to Riedebelt. Van Dijk steps forward. Prevents it from reaching Schlupp. Forward ball. Here is Mo Salah. Salah waits for the ball to settle. Goes down inside the penalty area. Jota forced out wide left-hand side. They've doubled up on Jota. And Munoz will be there for Crystal Palace. And they get a throw, Liverpool, down by the corner flag over on that far side and five minutes remain. Still they trail from the throw. Saboslai, Konate, 30 yards out from goal. Salah, Mitchell, tracking him every step of the way, tight as ever. Edouard tries to put pressure on McAllister. He got a knock in the back, McAllister's gone down, winded in the kidney area there as Van Dijk passes the ball out towards Gakpo. Gakpo on the left, enters... The edge of the penalty here on that left-hand side, delivers the cross, Salah's touch, goes away from him, out of the box, Alexander-Arnold plays a flat ball in, Lerma, terrific defending again, Ian Anderson, haven't missed a trick, so impressive. Yeah, he's been great, you know, considering he's a centre midfield player, he's read the game brilliantly, he's always been there, so is his big partner Anderson, and they've been a wall today, even though they have been breached a few times, the goal is still intact at the minute, Ian. Here is Elliot. Four minutes now remain. Palace still lead by a goal to nil. Title slipping away, or the title hope slipping away here in Anfield for Liverpool. Elliot now, edge of the area. Elliot onto his left foot, delivers the cross over the head of everybody. Did it take a deflection? Liverpool players thought so. Referee Chris Kavanagh says not. Goal kick, Liverpool nil. Palace won, 93 and a half minutes played. Lerma's gone down. I'm not surprised if he's got cramp. Yeah. <laughs> he's been everywhere today. He's given so much to his team. I know the fans are a little bit frustrated, but an injury's an injury, you know. And uh, he's been a uh, he's been a stalwart today. I think he's been brilliant for Palace. As is Young Wharton in midfield. I think he's had a great game as well. In this environment against the quality of opposition, I think he stood out for me as well. Judging by the bottom tier of that Sir Kenny Dalglish stand, the amount of Liverpool supporters heading for the exits, they don't believe. 
they don't have faith that their Liverpool side will score in the next three minutes that remain of injury time as Palace, who've only kept two clean sheets in their last 23, are going to get a clean sheet here today and you would think five points clear of the relegation zone before today, never seriously felt that they'd get relegated anyway but that would be enough for Crystal Palace this season as they look forward to a 12th successive season in the top flight, their longest ever run in the top division of English football. And two and a half minutes remain, and Liverpool still trail by a goal to nil. They've got it all to do in, in Europe in midweek. We'll have that commentary for you on Thursday. This could be a serious setback for their title, though. Salah, back it goes. McAllister finds Elliott, cross-charge down. Mitchell to a man. Crystal Palace players have been absolutely brilliant in yeah, every well, I aspect. I have to say, you know, Munoz, Mitchell, Lerma, Anderson, playing when he was on, the back five have been outstanding. Uh, I thought Hughes and uh, Wharton in the first half were brilliant, and, you know, we talked about Eze and Elise and what they bring to the team. You know, they're just a different team when those two, two play together. Um, and they were brilliant first half. They've had to be resolute second half. They've hung in there, they've rode their luck a little bit. But it looks like they're going to come away with an unbelievable result here, Ian. Certainly does. They haven't beaten Liverpool in their last 13 meetings since Sam Allardyce and two goals from Christian Benteke seven years ago. After that, Liverpool went on a long and beaten run of 68 games here at, uh, at Anfield. But their undefeated run in the Premier League of 28 is going to be coming to an end. The Crystal Palace fans in that half of the Anfield road end towards the left as we look are starting to celebrate they know that they're going to get a valuable three points here under Oliver Glasner as Mitchell with 60 seconds remaining keeps the ball down in the corner flag and Liverpool with back-to-back -back defeats as RU tries to win a corner now you can forget any idea of Liverpool winning this game. The question is, can they salvage a point, even though that, that probably won't be enough? As the ball is played back to Alisson. Jurgen Klopp is having a word with the assistant referee. Chris Kavner has... I think there's a little off the ball incident between Lerma and Salah. Lerma's been shown a yellow card as a result, and a free kick has been awarded to Liverpool. Lerma's shown a yellow card for that off the ball incident. So the ball will be brought up away over the halfway line, free kick, well, sort of the second third of the pitch. Alex, is it? it is. This is it. It's a Hail Mary now for Liverpool. Can Palace see it out? Whether it's enough. Alisson is coming up from the back. I remember being at the Hawthorns when he scored a goal for, for Liverpool. But the seven minutes have added on time are all but over. In goes the free kick. Van Dijk gets his header on that. And eventually it's dealt with. So Bosley runs the ball out of play for a, a goal kick. And once again, the high fives from Anderson and Henderson at the back. And Crystal Palace have won. Liverpool have been beaten. And their long unbeaten run in the Premier League at home of 28 games comes to a shuddering halt. And maybe so does their title aspirations. It's a serious setback. Crystal Palace outstanding in every aspect. Attacking and adventurous in the first half, resilient and stubborn in the second, and Liverpool have lost back-to-back -back games here at Anfield. Europe on Thursday, the Premier League today, and Crystal Palace held on. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace one nil. Lennon. Well, what a game! That game gave us everything. Both teams give us everything. Uh, incredible result for Crystal Palace. Congratulations to them. There first half performance was absolutely brilliant Liverpool really tried to force the game second half and to be fair created four clear cut and I mean clear cut chances to get them back into the game but it wasn't to be and it's a huge blow, it may be irreparable Ian, in terms of their title charge, you can't lose games at home at this stage of the season and uh, what a horrible week it's been for Liverpool to draw in a defeat on Thursday and a defeat again today they left everything out on the pitch. They just couldn't score. But they should have done with the opportunities that they had. But let's give an enormous amount of credit to Oliver Glasner and his team for some brilliant individual performances. And as you quite rightly said, they were so resolute in the second half. What a scoreline. Not many people would have seen this one coming as the Palace players go over to celebrate with their travelling support. It's finished here at Anfield. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace 1.
Ian, Neil, fantastic work at Anfield today, but what a scoreline, and that really shakes up this three-pronged title race. So the table before Arsenal kick off at half-past four looks like this. Manchester City top, 73 points, 32 games played, and a goal difference of plus 44. Arsenal second, 71 points, two behind, with a game in hand. That's against Aston Villa at 4.30, and a goal difference of plus 51. Liverpool have now played 32, the same amount as Manchester City, 71 points, and they're 10 goals worse at this stage than Arsenal in the goal difference states. Um, Neil Lennon, you've just said you can't lose games at home at this stage of the season. Six games left, Liverpool's next three all away from Anfield. They're in a massive hole now. Yeah, if you analyse the game in the cold light of day, Fletch, they just didn't start the game well at all. The first half performance was poor. And it doesn't matter, you know, against quality opposition. And to be fair, Palace going forward in the first half were quality. They punished them. You know, Mateta could have made a 2-0. You know the, <clears throat> it's going to come in the second half and Liverpool forced the issue. But they did miss some real easy chances, Fletch. You know, you can't, you can't miss those quality of chances and expect them in the game. There was four... Nunez, Salah, Jota um, and Jones you know and it just didn't seem to be Liverpool's day but you can't start games and play a game in 45 minutes you know against Premier League opposition Palace rode their luck at times but they also had an unbelievable chance from, from Mateta in the second half Alisson it was a miracle save Fletch we, this game honestly today had everything it was so dramatic it was so tense it was so exciting you couldn't take your eyes off it and I said to Ian you just don't get easy raids in the Premier League, and that's been proven today again. Absolutely. We'll get to Crystal Palace in a second. What a building block this is, Dano, for Oliver Glasner. But let's just talk about Liverpool for now. I don't want to pile in with a torrent of statistics, but they are numbers that we spoke about before the game started. They've now gone eight clean sheets in all competitions, eight games in all competitions without a clean sheet, six at home at Anfield without a clean sheet, and today, 21 shots and they didn't convert any of them. There is a familiar theme in Liverpool performances right now. They concede goals, and it's taken them far too many attempts at the other end to score them. Well, I mean, the finishing has been an issue for uh, this season, not just in this game, not just last week against Manchester United. And the failure to keep a clean sheet today actually equals a club Premier League record of nine successive home games. So that's from 1996 and also 98 to 99. So that's an unwanted statistic. And also the fact that, you know, we were saying before that, you know, they've fallen behind in 18 games this season. That You're constantly chasing games. And yes, they might have clawed back 27 points from losing positions, but they're putting themselves under pressure time and time again. And had it not been for Andy Robertson in the first half and Alisson in the second, Crystal Palace's lead could have been, could have been far greater. Uh, so, Neil, with his experience, believes that Liverpool now out of the title race massive massive blow and as you said and we mentioned it in commentary the next home game the 5th of May against Tottenham they knew coming into this game their destiny was still in their own hands it's no longer the case and Manchester City with their proven record very very difficult now for Liverpool uh, one more Neil on Liverpool for you then Dano I'm going to come back to you on Crystal Palace um, I mean 2024 Neil started with Liverpool chasing a quadruple they've won the League Cup and now they face the prospect of nothing else if they miss out in the title race they need a miracle on, on Thursday night in Europe and they've gone out of the FA Cup. I mean, this season now is starting to fall apart at the seams for them. Yeah, it is. I just said it's been a horrible week for them. You know, the draw at Man U and then obviously the 3-0 defeat on Thursday night, which I don't think anyone saw coming and I don't think many people would have seen this. Look, Fletch, we, we said before the game, we were talking to Ned and we were talking to Julian, you know, all the guys were saying, you know, we feel sorry for Palace coming here today because you think Liverpool are going to get on the front foot and take the game and swamp all over Crystal Palace they did that second half they didn't do it in the first half they only played one half today to the capability that we know that they, they can reach I thought first half they were all over the place I thought the, the shape of the team particularly down the right hand side defensively was so open and they kept giving the ball away and turning over the ball in the centre midfield and they, they got punished once they could have got punished a couple of times but they didn't look like championship contenders today I have to say particularly in the first half when I saw City play yesterday, you know, they looked, you know, a machine. And Liverpool, second half, were great, couldn't score, deserved to score, but you, you got to play two halves at this stage of the season, and I felt they give too much away in that first half. 
Ian, Crystal Palace then. Two defeats in seven now under Oliver Glasner. They've scored in six of the seven matches. They've been ahead in six of the seven matches. They're now eight points clear of Luton in the final relegation place, so they can forget about that. And in those seven games, they played three of the top five, Manchester City, Liverpool and Tottenham. I just want to pick out one player today because you... You quite eloquently explained all the, the magnificent blocks and defensive situations they got themselves in. Joachim Anderson was given the player of the match. 14 clearances today, and he just glued that whole defensive effort together for them. Well, he did. I mean, he had Lerma in midfield to one side, and then he had essentially a right-back, Nathaniel Klein, to his right-hand side. Lerma was equally impressive for, for Crystal Palace, but Joachim Anderson is the only Crystal Palace player who started all 32 Premier League games for Palace this season, and he was so influential. And those blocks came in from, from Klein and Mitchell. Everybody contributed. The midfield of Wharton and Hughes, when Hughes was on the field...